All right, Hidden, we got to talk about rocks, man. Dak, I agree. Let's talk about rocks. We got, we got a lot to talk about. Yes. Yes, we do. So, uh, so I know a lot of the people watching right now just came from my Why Blackbeard Doesn't Sleep video. So I talked a lot there about how rocks and Blackbeard may have connected. Um, but Hidden, I want to get your initial thoughts on what you think rocks and blackbeard's connection is do you think their father and son do you think you know he saved them from like or he saved his family from a bad situation what do you what, what do you think the connection is i'm i've been very torn on this i've been like back and forth on it i definitely like the first instinct is to think they're related like blood related mm -hmm. but i i don't know i don't think <clears throat> i don't think that's the case i think you know a big theme of the story running theme in one piece is that like there's like obviously inherited will you've heard this a million times but like most of the people that inherit their will from someone else aren't blood related to them you don't have i mean actually this is like contradicted directly in the story um like the whole blood relation inherited will thing by like the monkey family for example because you have yep. garp yep. whose son and grandson both did not follow his path the path that he wanted for them his, his son did not inherit his will in that way, and, and Luffy didn't inherit Dragon or Garp's will. So the people that they're, you know, connected by blood don't really end up doing the same things in life. And it's the people that you kind of get adopted by in a way that, that pass on their will to you. Luffy inherited his will from Shanks. Um, you, could, you could say the same thing to a degree with... Um, you know whitebeard and his family members and and everyone in the whitebeard crew they're not blood related uh kobe and garp you know so i think that that trend continues with blackbeard i don't think blackbeard and rocks are related by blood i don't think they're, they're father and son or whatever i think it's more of like an ideological inheritance you know blackbeard saw something in rocks's beliefs or maybe he was shaped by someone related to rocks or on the rocks pirates to to have these beliefs and this knowledge uh, and then he picked up he picked up the mantle where you know rocks mm -hmm. left off that's that's pretty much yeah. what i think right now yeah and, and i totally agree with that i i honestly didn't even think about the the monkey family connection but that might be the best one because that's like a, a super clear thing where it's like like grandfather marine so, son or you know father of luffy but son of that grandfather being dragon leader of the revolutionaries then yep. the son of that pirate king like you literally yeah and, and garp is the hero of the marines you know what i'm saying so you have literally each like top dog in the three factions right yep. which which beautiful storytelling from oda just to set that up i think that's awesome yeah. uh but you know even on top of that in in the video i just did i brought up how ace was you know roger's son and ace wasn't going to be the pirate king even yeah, he if didn't he didn't die it. he didn't want it right he was like whitebeard is going to be the pirate king roger's mm -hmm. rival is like that like to me it's very very clear that if you're going to inherit a will from somebody it's probably not because you're the child of that person you know what i mean like e even to a degree i think you could even look at like odin and momo because they they are similar right like not that they're completely different but momo in my opinion is like a little bit more of like a level-headed kind of leader right odin was like Get rid of these walls you know like it's time to free the country whatever but then once momo got privy to the same information as odin he's like no keep keep the walls yeah. here right completely opposite um yeah he kept so, the walls up and he didn't go out on adventures like odin i mean he did yeah. but like he didn't choose to do it it wasn't like he wanted to be like odin so he set out to see it you know yamato's a direct contrast yep. to that because exactly yamato to wanted to follow in odin's footsteps and do those things while momo was like i'm gonna stay behind and rule my country because my father didn't do that and look where it got us yeah uh so so yeah, sure. so then let me ask you what do you think between rocks and blackbeard what do you think about the situation where rocks died when teach was only two years old like if you had to like guess of a way for that will to be inherited or some connection like what what do you think like how did they interact in some way well, I don't think I, I personally don't think they directly interacted. I think that um, Rox had someone who who carried the message from the Rox Pirates into the next generation. And for me, I mean, obviously, you know, I have that theory. We've talked about it, the Lafitte idea. Mm -hmm. I think that you know, there's like a kind of a Black Zetsu situation going on with Lafitte, where uh, you know, there, there's that panel at, at God Valley. You have all the pirates there, and then there's that one in the corner that uh does not have any dialogue his mm -hmm. face is totally silhouetted 
and i've been trying to piece that together you know since then is like okay this is someone who oda has chosen not to really elaborate on right now and maybe for mm -hmm. a good reason it could be that he you know is still around in the story and if that happens to be lafitte he does look like him i think that you know blackbeard got his inspiration from rocks through a second secondhand source someone who was there with rocks someone who who had rocks's ideals you know drilled into him but survived god valley and went on because obviously blackbeard didn't get it from big mom he didn't get it from kaido he didn't mm -hmm. get it from shiki or captain john uh yeah. so he had to get it from somewhere and you know that's that's where my guess is um and i'm glad you brought that up because uh for anyone who's seen <laughs> hidden's lafitte theory uh i heard that at anime nyc like like a month before <laughs> yeah. it came out <laughs> i i remember yeah. i remember the discussions um and you know so while i do think that person in the corner of the panel you're talking about is wang Ji, i do want to build sure. off this lafitte idea a little bit because there are a couple in my opinion maybe interesting things to think about the first being that uh, and you brought this up in your video, I, I think. I did watch it. I think you brought this up. Um, where, like, you know, he and he and Brooke share some odd similarities. Or, like, well, I don't know if you brought up the Brooke thing specifically. but I like didn't bring that up. But, but the past life situation, right? Yeah. Where, where Lafitte was, like, like he was called the demon sheriff. He was, like, a like a police officer that was, like, too aggressive, I guess. Is, you know, the yeah. way the way you could break that down. And then, yeah. And then Brooke was, like, the leader of a squadron... Or, or a battalion. I forget what the right what the word he used was. Some entourage thingy. Like he protected somebody in like a military aspect before he became a pirate, right? Yeah. So you so you have this double life, and then Brooke obviously even had like another life where he literally got like a second life because he died and then came back, right? Um. So for this Lafitte thing to like for him to like kind of connect the generations in that way, sort of like Brooke is because Brooke's all remember Brooke was like roger oh i remember a rookie by that name back in the day like i could see lafitte being like oh yeah rocks i knew him back in the day like a very similar kind of vibe there mm -hmm. um so i do like that uh but to but to even build onto that even more the the connection between blackbeard and rocks that i didn't bring up in my video and i wish i did well i, I wish i did in some senses it would have made the video longer and at some point when i had like too many options and it just dilutes the other ones but another option is what if the Saber of Zebek is the actual connection between the two? And then so what if Lafitte brought the Saber of Zebek from Rox's crew after God Valley, and that's like the start of it? Because so we know the Saber of Zebek is Teach's ship, but we have not seen it yet, right? We ha like it's only been mentioned. All the ships we've seen are just like basic log rafts. We have not actually seen his main ship yet. And it's mm. I think that I think that's really interesting because I mean that's like that's like the biggest thing for a pirate crew is like your ship. Like if you don't have your ship, I mean, you know, like that, how, how can you, I mean, you can, you need a flag more than anything, but secondary to that is the ship, which holds the flag. You know what I mean? So I like um, that idea. Actually. I think that makes a lot of sense. Cause, uh, you know, you have Blackbeard taking pirate Island from Wang Shi during the time skip. And he didn't have that ship until after the time skip. So it could be a situation where, you know, e even if it's not Lafitte going off of like what you said, that guy's Wang Shi. Okay, well, Wang Shi was living on the Rock's home base for a oh, while. True. Where where would the ship have been all this time if not on Pirate Island this entire time? Maybe Wang Shi took the ship and took care of it all these years. Blackbeard takes the island from him, defeats him with Kobe's help, according to him. Yeah. Uh, and then takes the ship, and he, you know, because Blackbeard's whole thing is stealing from other pirates. He steals. He stole his devil fruit from Thatch. He yep. maybe he stole his pirate ship from one of the Rock's crew. Dude, and, I I love that. Yeah, wow. yeah, that would make sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. I, like even like just put the I, Lafitte idea aside, like you know, because that's just my my theorizing. Uh -huh. but let's go off the information in the story. It lines up timeline wise. Like where, when did he get the ship? Probably the same time he got his his home base. You know, dude, I I actually love that. So so let's let's make this even even crazier. So so going back to the idea of like how would rocks and blackbeard have spoken or if if they did or how how did rocks's message get shared to blackbeard because you know for for luffy roger his word was spread around the world you know what i mean like like the one piece you know like he left his treasure in one place all that stuff like everybody knew that that's how that's how luffy heard like the whole world did that was why roger did that the way he did but for rocks he's been erased from history right we didn't even know he existed till chapter 956 or 957 whichever it was yeah um, so, I think. 
yeah, it's one of the, cause I know those those two are like the end of Act Two chapters for Wano that led into the Odin flashback. I think so. Whatever yeah, it was, Ultimate, one of the two. Ultimate was the name of the. That's what yeah. that's what I remember. The fucking yeah. chapter title. It, it's nine fifty seven. Yeah. Now that I think about it, because yeah. uh, uh, I just remember looking up a Sengoku panel where he like is talking about rocks for the last video. It's definitely nine fifty seven. Yeah. Um, but uh, but basically, so going back to the idea of how they you know may have spoken or got that message across. What if the Saber of Zebek is the, like, so I like the idea that he got a hold of it from the time skip, which I think is still, like, it, I think that is totally on the table, but even for the origin of it, because we don't know where the Saber of Zebek, like, was after God Valley, right? Like, like, oh, hey, come here, buddy. Sorry about that, everybody. Oh, come here, Cliff. I'm going to shut the door. Um, he, like, he can, he can look out the window and see down the street, and so he's barking at stuff, you know, several blocks away. Um... But, uh, I, but, but, but the ship, you know, assuming this was Rox's ship, we don't even know if that's true, right? We're, we're kind of taking a stab there because it's called the, yeah. Sab the Saber of Zebek. It has his name. Um, and there's this thing from Road to Laugh Tale where they, like, they have a section on the page that says, the one who uses Zebek's name. Blackbeard's ship is known as the Saber of Zebek. Is there some deeper connection here? Rox's mm -hmm. will in quotes next to it. Could his designs still threaten the world? And so that, like, makes me think, like, dude, this ship might be way closer to Rox than we thought. Like, I think this might be Rox's ship. And basically, the whole idea I'm, I'm trying to get at here, I'm trying to, like, approach it in, like, a more reasonable way. But what if Rox is, like, the Klebaudermon of that ship now <laughs> or something? Or think going back to, like, you know, the personality swap stuff. What if, like, he was swapped it with the Klebaudermon? I know these are, like, super crazy, but, like, what if he is closer to this ship than, you know, we think is basically the idea? Yeah, I I, I would be down for um, the ship to have some, like, significant story implications, like how Blackbeard got it, where it came from, because, I, you know... I don't think we've seen the ship. I know there's been a couple times, like when Blackbeard pulled up to to fight Law, he was on a ship that mm -hmm. hasn't been confirmed to be the Saber of Zebek. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if when we do see the ship and like it's confirmed that that's that's the ship, uh, if it either looks like the same one that we saw Rocks on in the flashbacks, or mm -hmm. if it has some crazy design or or crazy figurehead that like yeah ha has some implications. Whether or not he's the Klebauderman, I mean, unless Oda gives us some some more Klebauderman information, because we haven't heard about that realistically since Water 7. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I will hope that Oda brings that idea back into the story again in some way, because uh, if he does, then I could see potential with that, you know? Yeah, because um, yeah. Cause going back to the Klebauderman and Water 7 thing, something that I find really interesting is that Water 7 is also where we heard the, the most of our information about Pluton and the anti-Pluton, which is like supposed to be the craziest ship in the world, right? And yep. and Bla and uh, Frankie had the blueprints to it, like the designs to Pluton, the anti-Pluton, whatever it is, right? It says Pluton on the blueprints, but they said it's the counter, whatever it is. Um, so I so going back to the Saber of Zebek thing, where it says like, could his design still threaten the world, like? I don't know. I'm, I'm just going back to Water 7 with all the ship stuff there. Like, that's literally the place of the, the ship building. I'm almost wondering, just like, like, was Rox making just as crazy battle? Like, it, it's like a Frankie thing, so it doesn't make sense. But it's kind of like, was he making weapons on that level? You know what I'm saying? Like, was he a smart guy creating the ships? Like, is he a... Uh, I don't know. Is he a ship, well, right? <laughs> you no, know the, I mean? the, the meaning I got from the design comment, like Rox's designs, for me that that is more like um, like his machinations, his plans. You know what he mm -hmm. like. You know, is the world still threatened by Rox's designs? It's like, is the world still threatened by Rox's plans and like the things, his ideals, the things that he was trying to do when he was around. Uh, so in that respect, I think what the what the like the whole little blurb is trying to say is like you know it, does rox's will still live on is he is his uh are his desires being carried on by blackbeard the saber the saber of zebek like blackbeard's using his name you know what could mm -hmm. this mean for what blackbeard wants what are his desires you know maybe maybe yeah. rox is 
Rox's desires are living on through Blackbeard, his his plans and machinations, his designs. So that's yeah. that's how I'm taking that. Yeah, I I think that could be the safe answer. I think this might be worth a, a translation check, <laughs> just because to, for me it's weird that it's in the the specific because this whole thing's about Blackbeard's past and like tangentially rocks like this whole like chapter of Road to Laughtail. Yeah. But this little section is specifically about the ship where it says could his designs threaten the world. So that's and I'm like. You're picking the word designs in that box. You know, like designs is a weird way to say plans, I guess, is what they're going for there, probably. Like, you know, what his overarching plan is. But um Yeah. But what I basically where I what I think the Saber of Zebek thing is probably going is I I bet you it's just broken right now. You know what I mean? Like it's probably unusable like the Mary was, going back to Water Seven and the Club Outer Bonds and stuff like that. I'm betting it's unusable and they need to fix it. You know, and that's that's the only reason we haven't seen it. Um, they don't have a ship right probably because they ride around on like logs. You know, yep. like they're they're not exactly like a a very ship savvy group, if I had to guess. Yeah, I mean, you got Burgess as the helmsman, but uh, I don't know if we've they, they haven't really have named. Right. Yeah. yeah, they haven't named which they have more members than Luffy's crew. <laughs> so yeah, maybe know. they have like some grunt on Pirate Island that can like you know slap some boards together, but. Uh, they don't have a Frankie, you know, they don't have like a, yeah. And, and uh, my theory for that is that they're going to get York. That's that's where I've been at for a while, because that would, that's, that, that that's, that's basically Frankie in terms of like, like a Vegapunk underling. Not that Frankie really is, but he wants to be, you know what I mean? That's like his goal is to be on Vegapunk's level. And York kind of is just by default by, you know, accessing punk records and all that stuff. Um, they also have like similar uh, aesthetics. Uh, at least clothing wise <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah. um so i think that would be kind of cool uh and she would also just really like i mean she knows how to make the seraphim you know what i mean like she could probably get blackbeard all the fruit powers he wants you know without even killing people yeah um, that's true yeah so and, and that'd be and crazy by the way i mean if, if blackbeard like managed to get the seraphim on his side in any capacity or something like that that would be yeah insane that, that that's been my agenda for a long time because uh i think i think the seraphim exist so oda does not have to kill the devil fruit users that blackbeard needs the powers of you know what i mean mm, like, i like that he wanted boa's fruit guess who's on the island uh seraphim with boa's powers in it uh you go back yeah. to god valley the two fruits that we know were there for sure were kaido's fruit already duplicated by vegapunk and the pawpaw fruit in in s bear right now uh he tried to get moria on his crew Moria uh, has a Seraphim also, and he has a Paramecia, so we can almost assume that his shadow powers are in that Seraphim. If all, if and also Katarina Devon can turn into Saturn now. Saturn is the top of the the hierarchy to control the Seraphim. True. So it could be crazy too, considering that Vegapunk cloned uh, Stussy. So there's like also the possibility that Vegapunk secretly cloned the other Yonko, uh, and maybe even made Seraphim of the Yonko. So like, oh, wow. so imagine if there was a Seraphim of Big Mom, there was a Seraphim of Shiki, there was a Seraphim of Whitebeard, uh, and and then Blackbeard got them on his crew in a way recreating the rocks, but oh, with cooking. Seraphim instead of the Yonko. Like he got he gets like a Seraphim Black, a uh, Seraphim Whitebeard, a Seraphim Big Mom, Seraphim Kaido, all on his squad, and it's like the rocks crew, but like upgraded, because you know wow. like I see that that could be insane if that happened i love that idea because like that that that's what's basically happening right is rox yeah. is or like blackbeard is we were just talking about like his designs still live in the world whatever that means it's like blackbeard's doing what rox was trying to do you know what i mean like i would i would argue it's probably like a one for one almost yeah too. Um, i think so e even going to the devil fruit thing which like I know there's some debate on this, but like we we can pretty much ascertain that like the Rock Screw at least went to God Valley to get those fruits, right? Because they're all like, I want it. I, like they at least had an emphasis to you know like those are important to them because Big Mom went right for one of them, and it's like yeah. right there is some evidence like well Blackbeard is all about getting the right Devil fruits. There's Rock Screw all just hogging them. You know what I'm saying? Going right for them. Um, and so yeah, I think it's, and I guess just going back to Sabers of Act just one last time, I'm. I wonder if this could be a Mary situation where, like, you know how the Mary was broken and they had a debate over, like, 
no, we got to get rid of it and get a new ship. And Usopp was standing up like, no, like we need to keep it, et cetera, et cetera. I wonder if we have a complete reversal where the Blackbeard crew doesn't want to get rid of the Saber of Zebek, but maybe Augur, you know, being the Usopp parallel there is like, let's just get rid of this dang thing. Like we, who needs this? You know, trying to be like the, the realist, I guess, of the crew. Like let's, who, what, what, this is so dumb, you know? Um, and so maybe like, cause maybe the hole is broken of it. And so they need something special to fix it, which I guess my, the only thing I can think of is like a zone fruit, probably, you know, like just become a living thing. It's funny that you bring this up because this is like, actually, I think the biggest reason for me, why I don't think the Saber of Zebek has a Klobouterman because the Klobouterman has stated that it, it only, you know, they only show up or they only form whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, when the ship is taken care of and loved by its crew. But the Blackbeard crew, I can't see them taking care of or loving a ship. Like, they're the types, like I said, to strap logs together. And, right. you know, Blackbeard is more so like a means to an end kind of guy. Like, mm -hmm. if it works, like, you know, he's the type that would buy like a, a rundown car that's like barely working. <laughs> and then yep. be like, look, as long as, it gets, yeah, as long as it gets me from point A to point B, I don't give a shit about the car. You know, mm -hmm. like... That's the type of guy he is. Um, he he. Whatever Blackbeard does, it's like he does the most efficient thing, but it doesn't have to look pretty. And that's the way. That's the same way he gets his devil fruits. Like, how is he going to become? How does he want to become king? How does he want to? You know, uh, sit at the top of the game. He's willing to take the dirty option every time if that's the the right option. So it doesn't have to look pretty. He can kill his own crewmate to get a devil fruit. He can cheat and like swoop in last minute after the battle's done and get a cheap win as long as he gets the win so same yeah. way with same thing with the ships like he doesn't need to take care of his ship he doesn't need to love his ship he doesn't need the the world's greatest dream ship like what frankie wanted to build with the thousand mm -hmm. sunny he doesn't need any of that he just needs a ship to get him where he needs to go if he needs to get here to, to kill someone and get their power as long as the ship gets him there i i don't think he really cares what it looks like or how what condition it is it's in so that's why i don't think the clabouterman would be on the saber of Zebek, like if they if they had one mm -hmm. just because just like the personality type you know like i i think that he doesn't give a shit about like anything it, besides power and and that's it so i i would tend to agree with you but i think the interesting thing there is i would say the opposite for the straw hats <clears throat> like obviously because they had a club Outerman, but when push came to shove they were like let's just get rid of the ship you know and obviously they had a good reason for that but to me the straw hats are kind of the opposite where like they would like, normally I would expect them to want to keep that ship no matter what. Like, this, this is our friend type deal. You know, like, we're not getting rid of this friend no matter what. Like, we'll do whatever it takes to, to keep them around. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't do that. Yeah. Only one crew member did. So that's why I, I think it could be a big twist from Oda to show Black. Now, Blackbeard would only care about the ship for selfish reasons, though. Right? Like, it's not like he would treat this ship like a friend like the Straw Hats did. I... I basically what I guess what I'm saying is I think that this ship is so important that Blackbeard does put that emphasis on it because it's it's a selfish thing for him like this ship is so powerful in some way shape or form or so important in some way shape or form that like I've been willing to keep it with me and protect it even though it's been broken and then maybe that's why the ship gets a Klobouterman because it's like you know I should have been dead forever ago but this guy is keeping me around because like a ship dies when essentially dies when the when the 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 keel is broken the whole the keel right is that what it's called yeah the, the, keel, the keel the keel makes a ship if it's broken it makes it not able to really sail anymore because it's the structure with like all the ships on the bottom built the keel yeah you know it's like the yeah. spine essentially the spine, right? yeah like if you break your spine you're, you're like it, it makes everything else in your body like you know non-functional so right so i, I wonder if like it is broken and teach has just been lugging it around you know what i'm saying and it's just like that's what creates the club Outermont, even though you know, he doesn't care about the ship itself. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know. Oda's hiding yeah. it for a reason. That, that's that's my main thing. You know, like yeah, yeah. I mean, not to not to harp on the the Club Outerman thing or like whatever, but I I do think that the you know um, the the Straw Hats having to get rid of Mary was not so much them like abandoning the Mary. They they just really didn't have an option. Like the ship's not gonna work. Mm. You know, if you go out to sea, it's going to sink on its own. Uh, they didn't really have a choice. I, I'd imagine that if they could have kept Mary and, and continued with Mary until the end of the story, they would have. It's, it's just that mm -hmm. they didn't really have an option. It's kind of like with Brooke and the Rumbar Pirates, you know, 
uh, Yorkie just couldn't keep going. You know, they, they didn't want to leave Yorkie behind. They didn't want to abandon him. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the guy was sick. He was on death's door. Uh, and he's the captain. So how you know yeah. how are you going to continue adventuring with with a, a dying captain? Uh, at yeah. some point, you gotta you gotta cut your losses and continue forward if that's what the journey calls for. Um, but you know maybe that, in that way in that way maybe Blackbeard is the opposite. Maybe he you know he's keeping the ship or if if it is broken and he's he's keeping it anyway. It could be because the ship has still some kind of use to him. And that's, mm -hmm. the, that's what I think the key is, is that Blackbeard needs, everything needs to have a use to Blackbeard. He has to have a purpose. If he's going right. to use something or kill somebody or do something, there's always like some purpose behind it because he has like a greater plan that he's trying to make happen. So if he keeps mm -hmm. the ship, it could be that he's doing it for, you know, uh, still, still selfish reasons, like you said, like he has yeah. a use for it that we don't know about yet. Yeah, like, so. like. Like, in my mind, like, maybe it's broken in half, like, just straight up, like, unusable. And so it's, like, just trash at this point. And then he's like, maybe I just need to, you know, give it, like, a, just a, an idea that I threw out in my last video. Not that I think this is, like, super duper likely or anything like that. But let's say Kaido did die and Blackbeard gets his fruit because, like, Rox seemingly had it or wanted it. If we go back to God Valley, like, there was such an emphasis on it, right? So let's say Blackbeard gets his hands on it, and we know zones can go to inanimate objects. You give that to the Saber of Zebek, and then it can move again. And it can even, remember, it's a fish fish fruit, so even on that layer, even if it sinks, it wouldn't die. I don't know how that would really work, but... Um, and so, yeah, because if you... Because with the Sunny, you know, the Straw Hats, like, wanted to get rid of it. And, yeah, I obviously, you know, it, that was because, like, it wasn't going to sail anymore. They didn't really have a choice. It wasn't like yeah. they just disregarded it. But at the same time it did sail again after that point only one more time and it saved their ass but that was kind of like a lesson to them that like okay like maybe we weren't taking this seriously enough sort of right Usopp has a similar lesson too where it's like okay like yeah the, the like there is a limit to the ships you know what I mean like they there is a way that they can break and not you know it's not all it's not all magic but it's like somewhere in between you know what I mean it's like you shouldn't give up on it but you also should you know Oda likes playing both sides of that coin so mm -hmm. I so I think for Blackbeard it would be really cool if it's like the opposite thing where like like the Straw Hats gave up early but learned they were wrong and like what if Blackbeard just never gave up and then but like way later his whole crew learned that he was right you know what I'm saying it's like kind of like a little bit of a reversal if they're they're trying to sail on the ship and then it sinks on them in the middle of the ocean because they didn't take it seriously enough yeah I, <laughs> yeah it, which I mean you know. Blackbeard's log rafts are probably not a lot better than a broken saber of Zebek at this point, anyway. You know. Yeah, like, I mean, we, we like saw I one said, broken the three times, kid. Yeah, he's all about point A to point B. I think so. <laughs> yeah. He's, you know, they're not they're not riding around in anything luxury. Yeah, they don't got a nice ship like that. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah. So the next question I want to get into is about uh, basically Rox's career. I guess is what I want to talk about and sort of like what he was like leading up to God Valley, maybe leading up to however he's tied to Blackbeard or whatever. Um, mm. And the first thing I want to talk about is something that we haven't actually seen yet, but we know happened, which is that, well, we can presume happened, I should say, which is that Rox beat Roger to Lodestar Island. And the reason we know this is in the God Valley flashback in chapter 1096, um, whenever Roger gets there, He's like, I've been sick to my stomach for the last year or, or something to that effect. Whenever he's, you know, because Rox is there, he's like talking to Rox. He's like yelling out loud. He's like, I've been sick to my stomach for the last year. And if you look at the timeline, one year before God Valley is when Roger went to Lodestar Island. And so you can pretty much presume that the thing he's sick about is that he went to Lodestar Island and Rox did something there that made Roger sick, basically, which, right? Which chapter was this? I actually want to see this. I, yeah. I didn't catch that line. Uh, 1096. Um, it's the one with, uh, you know, like like where we see the whole Rocks crew yep. and all that stuff. It's whenever Roger's like jumping off the ship. Uh, I'm going to mm. pull it up myself too, just so I have the exact dialogue. It it's, says been a whole, it's been a whole year. Do you have any idea how I felt all this time? Yep, there you go. So he's... He's definitely holding on to some kind of grudge, I guess, against uh, rocks for a year. Yeah, because yep. I'm trying to see if he's also maybe possibly talking about the world government here. Because in the panel, he's clashing. It seems like he's he's clashing with, uh, or he's about to clash with Garling. Um, in the like the panel directly to the left with that. So it could go any yeah, way. Maybe. It could go any way, really, because it does. It's not clear exactly what well, he's talking about. So. Well, 
Well, but, but the thing is, so he said felt this past year, and that's why the key is one year before this, because he said this during yeah. the Odin flashback. That's when he yeah. went to Lodestar. It was one, exactly one year. So I think it's I think the the idea here is he's just like I've been sick since I went to Lodestar or like I I have you know I I felt some type of way since I went to Lodestar Island a year ago. Um, and then you even have that panel next to it where Scopper, I yeah, I think it's Scopper. He's like, Roger, no using the captain card to call dibs this time, which is like, what, what time did you use the, the captain card to call dibs before? You know what I mean? Like, what's, what, like, Roger, what'd you call dibs on? Before I guess on the, the, yeah, like, who gets to fight who, maybe? I don't know, like, yes. I'm, I'm curious about that. So, so if we just make the assumption that, um, that it is about Lodestar, what, what do you... And also, I mean, Rox was around before Rox. Like, Roger was, like, a younger pirate than Rox anyway. So it would kind of make sense that Rox would beat him there anyway. So just yeah. what do you what do you think, Ro like, Rox found there? Or just why do you think Roger is sick about this? If that if it is tied to Lodestar. Like, what, what, what could be uh, missing from the island or, or something, you know? I don't know. It's hard to say directly, like, about the island itself. But I actually, I'm working on a, a theory right now that might connect to this. And it's this actually gives me a little bit of ammunition that helps uh, with the theory. Oh, so great. Yeah, if I could maybe expand on Lodestar a little bit. So uh, I, I've had this question, you know, ever since we got the confirmation that Roger got Shanks at God Valley, right? He found baby Shanks at God Valley at the at the end of the incident mm -hmm. in a chest or whatever. Um, I've wondered, you know, what's the deal with Buggy then? Because Buggy is about the same age as Shanks, you know, a few months younger. And mm -hmm. he was on the Roger crew as a kid too. And if we had to guess based on how Shanks... Uh, has handled, you know, bringing kids on his crew. He's always like, well, well let's wait until you're older. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'd have to guess that, you know, Roger was probably a similar type of guy where he wouldn't voluntarily take a child onto the ship with him if right. he had the choice. I feel like every time there That's was a point. kid on the crew, Shanks, and I think in Buggy's case as well, or Momo and Hiori, it's like... He didn't really have a choice. It was just a circumstance where, you know, Toki had a kid. Uh, I don't know that if that, you know, Momo was on Whitebeard's crew when he was born, but he was uh, uh, brought on to Roger's crew, I believe. And then it was Hiori that was born on Roger's ship. And Roger was like, oh, I haven't had to yeah. hold, I haven't gotten to hold a baby in ages, you know? Right. Remember, he's like, hey, hey, Rayleigh, remember this? You know, we used to do this all the time. So, you know, I think the implication is that both Shanks and Buggy, by some circumstance, ended up on the Roger crew as babies and were brought up right. on the ship. So the question is, where did Buggy come from? Mm -hmm. um, I'm believe I'm of the belief that Buggy came from Lodestar Island, and I think that you know Buggy, the Star Clown, Lodestar, um, kind of lends itself well. But what really is the kicker for me is the time, the time period. Lodestar Island, Roger got to Lodestar 39 years ago. Mm -hmm. Buggy is 39 years old. Okay, I like that. So, if Roger found Buggy as a baby anywhere, it would have been Lodestar because that lines up with the time frame. The he Buggy would have been just born; he would have been a baby there. So the question is, um, you know, if Rox was at Lodestar too, or if, or if Roger got there and met Rox at Lodestar Island or something like that, you know, there's that theory that floats around about buggy being rox's kid and why oda has has not shown rox's face up until now well the well there's the possibility that if if oda did show what rox looked like it would instantly give away who rox is related to because let's say rox has fucking bright blue hair right or if he has a red nose like at that point it's a giveaway so right. Oda could be holding off on, on that reveal just so that we don't see it. And I think it would fit right in line with Buggy's character and the whole idea we were talking about earlier in the stream of inherited will, not, you know, being blood related. Right. You know, Blackbeard's inheriting Rox's will, not Rox's actual kid, Buggy. Buggy is inheriting yeah. Roger's will to a degree. Um, here's the other detail. Yeah, even I more that, than Shanks's, I would argue. Cause it, more than, yeah. Yeah, at this point. At Especially because of the, the wanting to be Pirate King, partying all the time. You know, Buggy has a lot of that locked down. Um, yeah. And I think another another thing that helps with the Lodestar Buggy connection that I'm going to talk about in my video is Lodestar is kind of 
the the last island, but a false last island, mm -hmm. right? So if you see where I'm going with this, if Buggy is aiming to be the Pirate King, well, okay. Buggy's not actually gonna. We know Luffy's gonna be the Pirate King. So if right. Buggy's gonna, Buggy's kind of gonna be a false like like he's gonna be Pirate King. Maybe he might achieve some status or greatness by the end of the story. Uh -huh. But it's going to be like a false version of what Luffy For had. Sure. But, you know, Luffy doesn't take all the credit. He's not a hero, blah, blah, blah. But Buggy's perfectly happy taking the credit. He's perfectly happy mm -hmm. getting the titles, being famous, all this stuff. So in a way, Lodestar is kind of like a... Um, it's like an imitation laugh tale where it's like a fake laugh tale. It's the last island in the Grand Line. You get there and you would think that's the end of the journey. Same thing with Buggy. It's like he's going to reach all this greatness and the, the world at large is probably going to think that he's... Maybe they're going to call him Pirate King. Maybe not. Maybe he's going to achieve some similar level of status that the greats uh, did. But it, we know it's not real. Buggy's, Buggy's you know, kind of a fraud. He, he, he fell upwards to the top. So... Uh, I think that, like, yeah, having this connection to Buggy makes sense, and if that's the connection, then if Buggy is Rox's kid, then maybe something happened with Rox at Lodestar Island that, you know, maybe the Roger Pirates had to fight them there, and Rox having this kid, maybe Rox is kind of a, you know, maybe he's kind of a piece of trash, and... He, he abandoned his kid on the island. He's like, well, oh, screw this kid. Like, you know, I don't need this is an inconvenience. And then Roger took took Buggy onto his ship. And maybe ever since, you know, ever since that, he's kind of like really hated rocks or held a grudge against him. Like, I can't believe you would do this. Like, you're, you know, you're not you're you're a bad person. That's the type of thing I think Luffy would take problem with, too. If he saw someone, you know, abandon their kid like that and then just kind of like, you know, treat them like a. You know they're they're not worth anything i think luffy would take a very big serious problem yeah. with that and he would very much dislike or, or hate whoever did that and i roger's a lot like luffy so i could see that being the case uh and and you know roger's been taking care of buggy all this time so it'd be interesting if wow. like you know the two cabin boys came from the two babies that roger had to raise came from roger's two biggest enemies at god valley yeah. rox's rox's kid and garling's kid and they're both on Roger's crew. And uh, he got them one at Lodestar, one at God Valley. And it's like, these are his two biggest opponents, basically, right. from that from that period of time. So it'd be interesting if he, he raised them and then it throws the whole inherited will thing for a loop. Because it's like, damn. Like, these people, by blood, should have been evil pieces of shit. Right. But because they grew up with Roger, Roger kind of turned them into his prodigies and his next generation. Uh, and I, I, I like that. I, so. I like that too. I have some evidence for and against, so I'm going to go with the four oh, first. Sure. Go so for you it. Were t so you were talking about basically the idea that Roger, like maybe went to Lodestar, found Buggy, and he was upset that like a kid was abandoned or something. Or, or honestly, because like Buggy was born the same year that he went to Lodestar, maybe it's even like Roger came and found like Buggy's mom, like right before she gave birth or whatever. And he's like, you were left by yourself here, blah, blah. Like any kind of combination there could make sense. And you mentioned how Roger wouldn't like that. Like he would think that's wrong. Well, remember when they went to Wano and Odin went on to Wano for like an hour to go get the road Poneglyph rubbing and left. And then Roger was like, like, oh, you're just leaving your family, you scoundrel. Like, yeah, he, like he right. gave he gave him a hard time about it, even though Odin did it for Roger. You know what I'm saying? Like Roger yeah. still was an ass about it, even though it's like, Roger, I, I'm literally only doing this so you can become Pirate King. Like, just shut up. You know, like, I, you know, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't I would rather not. Well. Odin did want to do it, but I'm sure he would rather help his family also, you know, but yeah. Um, and so that's some evidence for it. And I, I, so I do, I like the general idea that Buggy is that like he found him at Lodestar and that's even what he's upset about. The issue though, I think is him being Rox's child because if it is a blue hair thing or a red nose thing, shouldn't somebody have said something by now that he looks like Rox? You know what I'm saying? Like one of the Rox members. Cause like you look at yeah, it, even, even like Marine Ford with like white beard, like, you know, Buggy was floating around for a little bit uh, in that, you know, whole altercation. And, uh, and I mean, at this point, you know, he's been a warlord. Now he's an emperor. Like somebody should say something, you know, that it, he, so that's my one issue. If it's the red nose, I would agree. So I, cause yeah, you see hair Rox, could get away so with. Blue, blue hair. I mean, it, there's plenty of people with blue hair. That's like, that's one mm -hmm. thing, but like, the nose is definitely, and we've seen Rox's silhouette where his nose is like depicted as like a normal nose in the silhouette. Right. Like you can see the outline of it. So it's not a ball or anything. Uh -huh. uh, but 
you know, if it's like something like just like the blue hair or, or something like that, or maybe he, you know, maybe he wore makeup on his face, kind of like a clown, like, like, buggy, like, okay. maybe he had the skulls, like, or like, not the skulls, like the fucking crossbones on his eyes, or, you know, he could have done something that that wouldn't show up on the silhouette. And would it be really a connection, like, oh, you use, you use clown makeup or whatever? Like, there's multiple clowns in one piece. It's not just Buggy. We have Caesar, you know, that wouldn't exactly yeah. give it away either. So I could see that kind of, but I agree with you. If it's like as something as obvious as like a big red nose, people would have said something by now because mm -hmm. um, the nose is also natural it's like a race yeah. of clowns you know it's like how many of, we've only seen one you know? yeah but you know it's like uh you know i just think that the symbolism is there especially you know buggy's a clown and like the whole laugh tail thing he was too sick to go on laugh tail and you know it could have been you know them passing through that part of the grand line where buggy's from buggy did did spend a lot of his life looking for captain john's treasure which you know captain john was on the rocks pirates mm -hmm. and good point and he was looking for the treasure on an island shaped like a skull that turned out not to be where the treasure was well where is the treasure probably located the actual skull island that the rocks were on which we now know is hachinosu i like that too. so so it's like you know he's definitely looking for something rocks related and that's why i feel like if there's any connection to rocks that buggy may have it's it's through that mm -hmm. um and also, you have the Cross Guild, right? Bro Rocks had a crew of pirates that you think of it like, wow, this this wouldn't make sense. Like, how did this man manage to get so many like people with King's Hockey, so many conquerors mm -hmm. to to work with him? Uh, and in the God Valley flashback, you see that none of them really like to follow Rocks's lead. Like Whitebeard said something about like, you know, uh, I'm not your follower. Like, is it crazy you're impl implying I'm your follower, you idiot? And like mm -hmm. everyone on the crew seems to have their own objectives and they're not really they don't really look at rocks as a leader but he is their leader so it's weird so like with the cross guild you have a similar situation where buggy's the leader on paper but but crocodile and and mihawk do not see buggy as their leader they're kind of reluctantly mm -hmm. like under his umbrella because of the way it's been portrayed but like it's kind of like a similar like if you told anyone like buggy is amassing all these different warlords onto his crew like if he ends up getting more if boa ends up joining if possibly doflamingo and weevil get out and they end up joining and you have this massive like the cross guild of like this crew of like you know insanely powerful former warlords it's pretty much rocks 2.0 more so than the blackbeard crew i feel like it's almost rocks 2.0 at that point yeah. He was like biggest amalgamation of powerful pirates in the world. Buggy like unknowingly recreating the same magnitude of crew that Rocks did, and with the same yeah. dynamic, with the same dynamic too. Which is like, to me, that's that's like a big thing. Uh, but not to harp on Buggy. I know this is about Rocks. Yeah. I'm oh, just trying to say that like good. if there's, a, yeah, if there's a Lodestar connection that we have to make to Rocks, I think that connection is made through Buggy and Buggy's influence on the modern day really can in my opinion, can mm. possibly be traced all the way back to what happened on Lodestar. Because we don't know exactly what's on the island. I can only guess what came from the island. And that's yeah. that's where I'm that's where so, I'm at with that. So so, so I like that. And just like the, the prior point, I have some evidence for and against. And so sure. for, uh, you know, going back to the nose thing, like the blue hair, like if, if Rox had a nose that or a red nose, that would, you know, that, that would be too big of a plot hole. I would argue like the hair, we can probably skip around, but not the nose. Well, we do have an example, at least one strong one in One Piece, of someone getting their nose from their mom and their dad not having anything close to that nose, and that is Usopp. Usopp, Usopp. and yep. Usopp has a lot of connections to Buggy. Yeah, you know? he, he's very he similar, gets... and that he's like yeah. a he's like a a fake leader. I say that kind of loosely because like they are, but up. yeah, but like they 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 paint themselves bigger than they are, right? Both of yeah. them do that. Um, they've never been seen in the same place together, by the yeah. way. That's another funny <laughs> oh, thing. Yeah, or so or so gay king. Yeah. yeah, we've never we've never had Buggy and Usopp interact in any way, even though they're identical characters. They lie. That's and interesting. They, they 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 lie and they get put into positions of like grandeur accidentally. Usopp mm -hmm. with the God Usopp thing, he had all these followers that believed in him for a little bit and like the tontada and everything buggy does the exact same thing he bullshits and people believe him and they have yeah. funny notes that people pick on all the time and they both get sick when they approach islands they're like worried about uh so like yeah they're very yeah, similar in that very. regard yeah you know like it's it's interesting that you bring that up like yeah buggy maybe just didn't get his nose he he didn't get his nose from rocks he got his nose from his mom and, 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 and from rock got the blue hair and making to, a clown 
like to, to build that even stronger like uh, something that just hit me so so Usopp also has another connection to somebody who has a I I would I would consider somewhat iconic nose not not as iconic as Usopp's or Buggy's but a different nose which is Noland who almost has a human colored clown nose you know what it's I'm saying round, it's just, it's just like, a round regular nose like and we know yeah. that Usopp and, and Noland have a connection of some kind probably familial like I I would I would honestly put money at this point that Usopp is going to be Mont Blanc Usopp or at least someone in his family is a Mont Blanc and he's just something else for now but like you know one side of his family is a Mont Blanc like because uh, yeah. there's just he's already said I'm related to him which is like okay well okay, it's already sealed you know there's uh, uh, that's the only evidence I need right there and so what if like what if basically Buggy and Usopp have a common ancestor which is a person with that kind of nose like a normal human colored clown nose but then they broke off and so you have the buggy with the red clown nose and then Usopp who got like a straight out nose you know what i'm saying so like they have a common ancestor yeah. i would also like if that if the nolan like the uh, mont blanc connection is through banchina rather than yasop so yasop is not related to the Agreed. to the mont blancs and it's banchina that is Agreed. and because of that uh Usopp is the only one in his family with the connection to the Mont Blancs that's still alive. So it's like, it, it, this also, once again, we keep coming back to this, but like the inherited will thing, like Usopp is not going to be just like Yasop. He's going to kind of be something larger than life, I think. And that's going to come from maybe his mom's side of the family where he is that ancestor. Uh, he, he is Nolan's descendant in that way. And because of that, you know, he's going to go to a higher level than Yasop could have because he's like this the, he's the gonna mix. be this famous explore explorer hero all this stuff so like with buggy yeah maybe maybe buggy got his nose from his mom's side his hair from his dad's side and those combination of elements make him look like a clown that's why he took up the clown aesthetic maybe rocks just had the blue hair and that's why he never did anything with that visually mm -hmm. uh, and then people haven't commented on it like i could see that working out there's also the possibility that buggy you know some accident happened when he was young that, that that hurt his nose and permanently made it like round and red like you know yeah, maybe true. he got bopped maybe he got bopped on the nose really hard when he was a kid true. and it stayed that way yeah for his whole life he just has nolan's nose but it got he got like really yeah. sick one time or something and it just yeah. stayed red forever yeah he could be Rox's kid and then like you know he got bopped on the nose and then got the big red nose and like no one made the connection ever since then because he doesn't look like because the nose like throws everyone off Huh. Uh, and that would be really in line with Buggy because he hates his he hates his nose. Uh, he's very sensitive about it. So like, you know, it could even be this thing, you know, with with Rox abandoning Buggy. Like maybe he, uh, I don't know. Like, it's it's a little dark, but maybe he like like tossed Buggy and Buggy landed on his nose and it made his nose like. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it'd be sad, but that would be a, it'd be oh, sad. But... That's an Oda type way to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Buggy um, got his nose from that. Now I the 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 pushback or like the counter evidence i would have is like we've we talked a few times about how when you have a direct familial relation you don't really carry the will directly right and so yeah. the thing for buggy is if he went on to go have a crew just like roger and like be the captain of it and have all these strong people under him that's like almost a one for one two rocks you know what i'm saying and so that would be kind of my pushback is like you know, we have a lot of evidence of the fami familial connection not leading to the same outcome, right? Like Ace wasn't even the he was he was a captain of the Spade Pirates, but ultimately wasn't even the captain of his own crew, let alone being Pirate King, right? Um, sure. and, and so, like for Buggy, he, you know, and, he, and also Shanks, I guess. Well, for Garland, I guess we don't really know his, you know, whatever he's got going on. But Roger was kind of like the father figure to Shanks in that regard, at least for his life. And even Shanks isn't really doing the same thing Roger did because he's like. I'm not gonna go get the one piece yet. Like I'll I'll worry about that later. Like I'm not gonna do that. Which like Roger, that was like his whole thing. Um, I guess we don't know a lot about Roger when he was super young, but I would I would presume he's just like Luffy and like gung ho for the one piece all the time. And so there's like a little so you know so for for Buggy to do the same thing as Rocks, at least to ha have the same situation, that would seem a little bit too on the nose. Not no pun intended, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But, but, but I mean, I guess maybe the, the counter to that is like, maybe like their end goal is different, you know, like That's maybe say, yeah, like yeah. Buggy wants to be the pirate king. Maybe rocks want to be king of the world, but maybe ironically Buggy will become king of the world, you know, or, or at least be thought of that way. Cause of some random something that happens. Um, I, I think like, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I oh, just wanted good. to quickly say, uh, I think that, 
you know, Buggy may have a similar situation crew wise to Rox, or like he may be mm -hmm. accidentally building like a very similar style of crew. But I think at the end of the day, like you said, their goals are different, and Buggy's means by gathering this crew, like Rox was definitely a strong guy. Like, I don't think Rox is a bullshitter like I, Buggy. I hope so. So, yeah. So I think that like the difference is like Buggy's goal is completely different. He he does not want what Rox wanted at all. Like, so he's not carrying on that that will and i think that's the most important part about rocks not how strong his crew was because there's plenty of strong crews in the story mm -hmm. you know it's not like luffy is carrying on rocks will by building an insanely strong crew himself mm -hmm. i think it's more so the goal like how go you know the, their goals align how similar they are i don't think buggy has any aspirations like rocks if anything buggy just wants to be really rich and famous that's what he wants yeah uh which is yeah. like that's I think that's the opposite of what Rox what Rox doesn't give a shit about money as long as he gets power at the yeah. end of the day. Well, so. I, I think it's tough because we know so little about Rox. True, that, true, which I mean that, that's what that's what this video is for though you know so yeah we're, we're, we're trying to predict it because it's you know because I agree like he should be strong but like I, I think he's Shanks and Buggy combined into one person that's like kind of my idea for him where he's like like not that Shanks isn't charismatic because people love Shanks you know like all over the world arguably but. Buggy has like an extreme level of charisma, you know what I mean? Like unparalleled, I would argue, like Luffy level, maybe even more so because he has like ton just tons and tons of followers. And then Shanks actually has the, you know, the strength and bravado to back that up. Like he, whether you follow him or not, he's going to kick your ass. But Buggy like requires people to follow him to kick your ass because they do it for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I, but I think Rox is a combination of the two. But but even that, you know, like we're, we're still kind of guessing, you know, like we really don't know. Um, I. I'd be shocked if Rox wasn't super strong. Like that would just, yeah, like, I would. Sengoku was like, uh, that was Ro that was Roger's first foe and perhaps his greatest. I'm like, if that guy couldn't yeah. throw hands, Oda messed up. You know, he I'm, can, he 100 percent can. It's yeah. like, he's not, he's not a, he's not just like a lucky guy. You know, like he definitely, he mm -hmm. could, he could throw hands. Uh, Buggy, I think, is just a unique case. Like his charisma and luck stats are maxed. And, all, like, all the way. Every, yeah. yeah, and everything else is like zero. It's like level one. So, <laughs> but he still gets through. Yeah, his his persuasion's a yeah. hundred. His yeah, he know, passes all, all the all the dialogue checks. He passes them, so he doesn't. Yeah. You know, he just like holds RPG, the space like, bar. You know, he yeah. just lets it run. He gets through you can, all the like, conversations. You know, like how like Baldur's Gate or like any RPG, like you can fight a guy or you could like potentially talk your way out of fighting the guy and then just yep. avoid the fight completely. And, like that's, that's buggy. what Buggy Buggy always just takes the the skill check. Like I'm gonna just yeah. charisma my way out of this situation. Yeah, he, yeah. he does. He does like the aggressive one too, where it's like because you usually have a couple options. It's like you you're you're lying to him so you can get through, or like you're being overly yeah. aggressive so he gets scared. But Buggy's always like the hey, I have a million people behind me. If you mess with me, you know, good luck. And they just like okay, you know. Kind of like Usopp does, going back to those connections. Like, Buggy would just be yeah. like, look, man, I got this whole organization. Man, I got, like, a what is the Buggy Delivery Service, which is what it used to be. Now it's the Cross Guild, because Croc did an, uh, an asset forfeiture, or whatever yeah, you want to call a it. Merger. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, an acquisition. Well, it was like a, a, a yeah, it was a merger and acquisition. It was a take, yeah, exactly. It was a complete <laughs> hostile takeover, too. He bought all the stocks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, straight up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and real quick, and to go back to the Lodestar thing, just to give sure. you kind of my guess about this, because I do love the buggy yeah. idea. I'm going to be like, well, I guess I should say it's my idea for, for Rox's kid is still Crocodile. I'm still really big Ooh. on that. Um, okay. Because like a very okay, cool. si similar vibe in that like Croc's like a mob boss, which is like a similar thing. And he made like the whole Baroque Works organization. Like it wasn't a real pirate crew, it was an organization. And Croc ties to buggy in the cross guild. So there's like a parallel there too, where like they met anyway. So... I'm pretty big on Croc, but I still love the Buggy idea, even if it's like a tangential thing. Like maybe Rocks just saved Buggy and like left him there because he didn't want a kid on his crew and it could be that brutal. So either way, I love that. But if it's not Buggy, um, I think it could be a road Poneglyph because we learned that that's where Roger found out that you that you need the four road Poneglyphs to find Laugh Tail. Like you have to get the Lodestar right. and that gives you that intel where Luffy got it uh on the back of zunisha you know it's zo inside the whale tree mm -hmm. so um so i think that's you know where roger and rocks both found out about the road poneglyphs and my guess is that there was one there when rocks got there but he took it with him and so that's why roger was sick to his stomach because he's like so i just found out that i need to continue my journey for like however many more years and one of the things i needed you took from there i'm I, i'm upset you know what i mean i'm coming to get this from you like and so then the question now would be like, well, which one was that? Because it's probably not the Zo one. 
It's probably not the Fishman Island one, and it's probably not uh, the Wano one, because those were all stationary. But what about Big Mom's? We never knew how Big Mom got her Poneglyph. What if it was the one from Lodestar, Rox took it, and then after the everything happened, Big Mom took that Poneglyph, and I think this could even tie into why she gave Kaido the Devil Fruit, because what if she was taking the Poneglyph, and Kaido was like, okay, like, you can't take both. <laughs> you know, like, you got, I don't, I don't even have a fruit yet, you already have one. Like, Lin Lin, because they seem to be almost like a big sister, little brother kind of thing at that point yeah. in the Rock Screw. So I can almost see him being like, come on, like, this isn't fair, you know what I mean? Like, give me, I need, I need one of these things, because, because Kaido didn't have Wano yet, so he didn't even have a Road Poneglyph in his possession. So I could see something where Big Mom's like taking it all for herself and then because she was probably I mean her and Whitebeard were probably the two biggest forces. I say that loosely because like I'm sure the other Rocks Pirate were monsters but at least looking at it right now because Kaido was so young because he was still like 17 or whatever he's still the beast but I would presume Big Mom and Whitebeard were like the top two and um and so Whitebeard didn't really care about road poneglyphs right like even Roger was like you want me to tell you where, La where Laugh Tail is he's like I'm good. Yeah he didn't. Yeah so I think Whitebeard probably like didn't care about the road Poneglyph and so Big Mom's like well I'll take it and then Kaido's like well if you're taking that you're not getting the, the other legendary fruit like I need that so I think that was kind of how things broke down um so yeah that's, yeah, you that's know, my I, thoughts on it I could add to that I think that you know there's still that question of the treasure that Roger stole from Pirate Island right Pirate Island's mm -hmm. like crown jewel or whatever they called it yeah or the celestial dragons uh, took or the government oh, took was it the government? I, I think yeah. it was. Uh, it was. I, I thought it was Roger that took it. No, because if you go mm -hmm. back to the beginning of the chapter, it's like, uh, like Roger or Garp is talking to Kong, and uh, and Garp randomly is like, oh. un, it's not He's like, what? What did they expect? They, as in the Celestial right. Dragons, uh, what? You don't just swipe the Crown Jewel of Pirate Island. Of course, they'd come to get it back. So it's like Rox is coming for whatever the Celestial Dragons took. Okay, yeah, so I misremembered that. I, th I thought it was Roger that took it, but no, it's the Celestial Dragons. Okay, I was gonna say if Roger was the one that took it, then that would have made it pr like definitely possible mm -hmm. that like oh it was like a Poneglyph or something. But okay, all right. So even then, um, yeah, I still I could still see that being the case. Like it, it definitely wouldn't be the, if there was a Road Poneglyph on Lodestar, it wouldn't be there anymore for sure because. Mm -hmm you know multiple people now know it's there and it would kind of just be up for grabs uh so maybe shanks took it back to elbaf you know because he had been there well, um, well well big mom would have it now if it is that one right well we don't know where the fishman island one went either that could have been the same one yeah well the man marked by flames has that one wherever oh whoever that mm. is yeah he he's it, so i actually tying to that you know part of my theory on like why i think mass deuce is the man marked by flames is like my reasoning for it and for all other answers is that you know that poneglyph is the fishman island one and so if you just think about it like logistically whoever has that kind of has to be friends with whitebeard like whitebeard probably moved it for safekeeping because he held that territory the entire time that we knew it was there like from pretty much right after roger died until whitebeard died he held that territory and the poneglyph was there at the start of that and so at some point when he held it it moved and i'm almost wondering if he took a page out of rox's playbook like maybe rox moved the one from lodestar thinking well if i take this one no one else can get it like i should just keep it for myself because then I'm, I'm i'm stopping everyone else from getting becoming pirate king and so maybe whitebeard thought the same thing like all right, well, you know, thinking in the future, because I might die here at Marineford or whatever, like maybe he thought about it, it was like a recent plan. Like, since I might die soon, maybe I should move that because Blackbeard just betrayed me and he knows it's down there. Uh, every pirate that's gone to the New World went through Fishman Island and they know it's down there. If I'm not around to protect it, they're all going for it immediately. And mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if he took a page out of Rox's playbook and he's just like, I'm going to move that now and hide it so that only the people I want to get it will get it. You know what I mean? That could be, yeah. So yeah, that that would make sense. Yeah, so that's because it's in like a very obvious like every pirate passes through Fishman Island on the way to the New World, mm -hmm. so it's yep. not exactly a conspicuous place to put a, it, a road poneglyph. And it's just in the you sea know? forest. It's not like in the castle. <laughs> in, no, it's not you know protected I mean? really it, at all. It's right by where all the ships go when they like crash and they you know because it goes like that yeah. graveyard of ships like in the sea yeah. forest. It's like right there. So it's just like. It's not guarded at all. If you just make it to Fishman Island, you can go and look around and find it. You know, like big, big yeah, that, Robin had no problem finding it. 
Yeah, that regular. was the easiest road poneglyph to find. Out of all of them, that, that had to be the easiest one because everyone passes through there. It's right out in the open. It's not guarded by or protected by anyone, really, I guess, except the, the fishmen. But, yeah. you know, they weren't, like, on top of it. They didn't have guards, like, stationed outside of it. So prior to it being moved, I mean, if you had to choose between that one or the poneglyph that's on zo like a moving island that's like you know yep. ten thousand feet tall like you know fishman island is uh is the easiest one underneath wano like yeah fishman island had to be the easiest one to find so okay. i'm not surprised it's gone now exactly like, you know because i'm sure whitebeard was just all over it like all right, well i know this is risky like i love the fishmen yeah you know i don't want them to be hurt you know so yeah so I, i'm thinking basically what made roger sick is that rocks took it that's that's mainly the point okay. you know it's just that he he went there and was like damn my journey is now extended massively because of that and also remember going like that if, if that if that is true and that ended up being big mom's poneglyph think about how roger like the one poneglyph he got that we didn't see him get was big mom's right he's like i i went and got that one from linlin -Lin already like he already had the rubbing and i almost wonder if it was like a situation where he's like I, Lin Lin, like we both know where this came from. Like we we both don't want to have this fight right now. Like you know what? I, like like come on, just just give me the rubbing and I'll get out of here. Like I could almost see the whole like, like the whole like I know you got this from rocks. This should have been mine on day one. I should have like just let's not let's just not do this, Lin Lin. You know, because like he says he stole it. So I like I'm I'm wondering but, you know how that happened because. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. And I just, he didn't have Brooke, you know, like he didn't have Brooke in there, like doing covert ops. Exactly. So I'm wondering how that would have worked. And, and also he just got like a rubbing of it. So it's like, it, I guess in my mind, if he went in like guns blazing, like let's just bulldoze our way through this and go take it. They would have just taken the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like they probably, they could have at that point. So like for them yeah. sneaking in, I'm almost like, did you like, like maybe he just threatened a lower ranking person and they're like, just take me in there. And then big mom had no say in it. Cause the person was like, I was going to get killed if that, you know, that didn't happen yeah, or something, which but is what I, <laughs> yeah. And, and I think kid may have actually done something similar. Um, like, like my main idea is that, uh, smoothie has the hots for kid. And so he oh. sweet, so he sweet talked her and, and got, got into the room that way. Cause kid just, I feel like Kid needs some kind of like funny character development. You know what I mean? Like he, I feel yeah. like he needs something that just makes us laugh a little bit and be like, oh, th okay, this guy's kind of likable. You know what I mean? Like he did. That's that's kind of cool. Um, but but yeah, so Kid he's, somehow he's got, got it. Yeah, which you know, Chariz like, Ch charisma or Kid Rizma. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure yeah. out some <laughs> some some pun there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I don't know, but. I don't know, Lodestar. I'm I'm excited for us to get there and uh, see Scopper because <laughs> that, yeah. I, I got my money on him being there. I hope uh, I hope it's not just like an empty island. I I don't know if we're even gonna go there. Go there, like for me, there's two options. Either we go to Lodestar for a very short period of time. I was actually talking about this the other day on uh, my stream with Edens, but like you know the the entrance into Laft or the entrance into the Grand Line uh when they first got in it was like a series a rapid fire series of islands that they went through uh -huh. and then they started getting these more regular like we're gonna stay on an island for like you know 60 chapters yeah but prior to that they were on like an island for like five chapters at a time and then moved on to the next one true so maybe with the final saga oda's doing like a mirror of that where like every island has been like very thick mm -hmm. uh, up until now and that to end the story we're gonna just rapid fire go from island to island to island before we get to laugh tale so we're gonna have like rel relatively short elbaf go to lodestar for a little you know a short period of time i don't know vera whatever something like that uh -huh. and then we get to laugh tale at the end uh so you know i think we might have luffy and crew go to lodestar maybe for just like a couple chapters you know yep. kind of like a whiskey peak situation um i could see that but I could also easily see whenever we get the full Roger flashback, we see the whole journey because Oda's probably going to do that at some point. Um, we're going to have a chapter or two of Roger actually going to Lodestar, seeing what Agreed. Lodestar was like from Roger's perspective. We don't necessarily have to go there as, as the Straw Hats because unless there's something important there or Oda writes a reason for us to go there, the only purpose of Lodestar is just to show you that, you know there's road poneglyphs and that that's how you get to the real last island so we already know that we don't need to learn that from 
you know, the, the Straw Hats don't need to learn that. Uh, the only argument I could see for them going there is that, like, it would kind of be like a Blue Balls situation, right? Like, the last mapped island in the Grand Line, and they don't go there. It would be kind of like, uh, yeah, it would be a little bit of a Blue ball situation. Yeah. But, like, a, you know, whatever. Like, I could, I could give Oda a pass if they don't go. So um, I, I love your idea about uh, like shorter shorter islands. Like I, I'm I don't even really want to call them arcs because like in One Piece they kind of like uh, naturally make an arc by arc structure by the islands because it's like you know what I yeah. mean? it's just an easy way to break it down. But but like you know I, I wouldn't call uh, like the island of rare animals an arc. You know what I mean? But we were there for a chapter. So the reason I say that is I hope we have like a arc or whatever you want to call it where we do make a couple quick pit stops because we. We, we visited, like, what, like, five islands in the post-time skip or something, right? Something like that. It's been 600 chapters almost, like 550. Something yeah. Something like that. Because we went Fishman, to... Dressrosa. Fish, Fish, Fishman, Fishman, Dressrosa, or Fishman, Punk Punk Hazard. Hazard, Dressrosa, Zoe, Whole Cake, Cake. Wano, so Egghead. six, and now seven. We've been in seven, seven. total islands. Yeah. Um, which is, like, it's, like, a good amount, but it's just, like, there's, there's so many other ones. You know what I mean? Like, even... Yeah. Like, Oda actually cheated and showed us multiple islands when everyone left because, like, like left Wano because, like, Law went to Winter Island, so we saw, like, right. a little tiny section of that. So Oda's kind of doing that, but I, I really hope he keeps doing it and showing us all these different places because yeah. uh, we have not gotten enough of that. But now the the one little bit of pushback I would give is I think Elbaf needs to be long as hell. And you know what I Like, it, if it's not, we're going to feel like we kind of did at the end of Wano, or at least a lot of people did, you know what I mean? Where it's like, well, weren't you supposed to do this or this? Did, why, like you brought this up yeah. at this point. And so, um, so, but, but what I do think is going to happen is we're going to get a small one, at least at Sphinx Island before Elbaf, because remember after Wano, Marco rode with Shanks and got a ride to his island because they were going to Elbaf and they were like, and he was like, oh, it's on the way. Like they can just make a quick pit stop and drop me yeah. off. Well, we're trying to go to Elbaf next, and if, if all we need is Sphinx to be on the one side of Elbaf, like the, the egghead side of Elbaf, and we, we will go right by it uh, to go there. And I think that's important because, I mean, Ace and Whitebeard's graves, well, Ace's grave mainly, but Whitebeard's too, I guess, because it's that's there. That's so very true. I think yeah. that's actually headcanon for me now. Uh, they got to go there. Yeah. I think that that would be, like, perfect to wrap up the journey, having them visit the graves and everything. Like, mm -hmm. No. And, and going right and right before Elbaf too, because that's like I don't think Shanks is going to be on that island. I think he'll be nearby, like fighting Blackbeard, basically. Um, because like you saw with Kid, he defend like he wouldn't even let Kid get on Elbaf. So I think it's the same thing. He's going to find out Blackbeard's coming. He's going to like intercept him. But either way, it would make sense to see Ace and Whitebeard's graves right before we supposedly are going to meet Shanks, because he's yeah. the one who brought the, the bodies there, the buried yeah, them. Yeah, set up the graves. Right. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, you know, we just found out that Weevil got taken to Impel Down. And Bakken, or Miss Buckingham, whatever way I say her name, somebody complains in the comments. So I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna say Bakken. But uh but uh so I think that she she just said like Vegapunk is the one who can prove that Weevil is Whitebeard's kid, right? So that tells me that okay, so Vegapunk or a Vegapunk or Vegapunk's information, whatever needs to make its way back to Marco because I think Marco needs to have a confirmation that Weevil is Whitebeard's kid before he summons the rest of the Whitebeard pirates and tries to save him basically like if, he, if he's going to lift a finger I think he needs to know for a fact that that's that Weevil is Whitebeard's kid that makes sense yeah, yeah. And, and so then you think about all this egghead stuff if we can leave there with Vegapunk or a Vegapunk at least then we just stop at Sphinx Island we have a we see the graves have a quick discussion with with Marco about Weevil and all the past with that in regards to that and Bakken gets, you know, proven true or whatever the truth is to, to Weevil. And then Marco's like, all right, well, let's go to Impel Down. Like that, that's, that's what I, I think he's going to be leading the breakout because it's, uh, it's, it's Whitebeard's kids saving Whitebeard's kid. You know what I mean? Like that, like they were, they should have done that for Ace. They should have saved Whitebeard's kid before and they failed to. And so they're not going to fail again because they're going to go save Weevil. So I think I, like I think that. so Sphinx has to happen, I think. Yeah, I mean I still think Elbaf will be relatively short personally just because I don't really see a conflict that that needs to be resolved on Elbaf right now. Obviously they have like the war, like the ongoing war with giants. They're a warring like mm -hmm. nation. They like that shit. Right. 
Right. Um, but like maybe Loki, you know, as implied by like the name Loki, you know, maybe he's not a, a great guy. But uh, I don't know. I feel like if they, you know, Big Mom is like the the Voldemort of Elbaf. They yep. really don't like Big Mom, but Big Mom's out of the picture right now. Like I can't see Oda bringing back Big Mom to be a villain or even a secondary villain for a third arc. That would be especially because people don't already don't love Big Mom. Like people do yep. not like that character. So I can't see there being a huge conflict on Elbaf. And if they do meet the red hair pirates there, which I'm also Eden swayed me on this in our conversation that that might not even happen. Mm -hmm. uh because it would be a little bit too easy like we know in advance shanks is on elbath like mm -hmm. tens of chapters in advance like 50 chapters in advance we're like oh shanks is on elbath we're yep. going to elbath that means Six. we're going to meet shanks yep. so like it's almost like too easy we're like oda's like hey look shanks is here we're going here next we're gonna meet him right we're yep. are you guys ready we're gonna everyone meet shanks. Get pumped and then he's not gonna everyone be there and then he's not gonna be there and he, and we know that shanks left elbath to yeah. uh go look for blackbeard i'm pretty sure right so well he said he was supposed to leave already so he's like yeah. he, shouldn't, he shouldn't have even been there when kid showed up right exactly so like the, he's not going to be there when we get there so i can't imagine there's going to be a, a huge conflict to take on on elbaf so not that it's going to be like two chapters long but i just mm -hmm. don't think we're getting like 40 chapters out of El. i think we're getting maybe maybe 10 to 20 like a zoe like i think wow. you know zoe was short but it had a punch, it had its moments, it did its plot development, it lore dumps, all that stuff. We got out of Zoe, despite Zoe not being a traditionally long mm -hmm. arc. It still felt substantial, and I think that's what we're going to get with Elbaf. Like, you know, 10 to 20 chapters, lore dumps, big information, we meet important characters, hear a little bit about Shanks here and there, move on to the next island, so on and so forth. I think that's that's the way it's going. Not to sidetrack, I know we're yeah. oh, no, you know, mainly talking rocks, but... Well, we'll get back to it. I mean, so I did a Logie Awakening video with Sai, and I feel like we we did talk about them, but we got off track a million times, and uh, I don't think <laughs> yeah. anybody complained. Well, I mean, this is this is good stuff to talk about, though. Like Elbaf yeah. is probably one of people's number one topics. So uh, I guess so. I am gonna put chapters in this video. So if you're watching and you really really want to get back to the rock stuff, down below you should be able to see when we get back to it because I do have a lot more rocks questions that we will talk about. But I do want to talk about this Elbaf stuff for just a little bit because yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm of the belief that we're, we're talking a hundred chapters. I think we're talking a big boy and I know like that's, that's, uh, hard to believe because Oda wants to end one piece soon. That's like the hardest thing about it is like, we kind of got to keep moving. Um, but I think, I think that similar to what I said about Wano, like how some people were disappointed cause like it felt rushed or there was just certain plot lines that didn't get wrapped up and you know, some expectations that weren't met. And is it our fault for having those? Is it Oda's fault for building them and then not delivering? You know, maybe it depends case by case situation. But either way, a lot of people did feel like Wano, you know, ended a little bit oddly, like a little less, you know, it ended well, but just not, there's a lot missing is what it felt like. And yeah. so for Elbaf, if it was, if it was even, if it was anywhere less than like 40 chapters, I think it would feel like that times 10 because we need the Usopp stuff, right? That's like the one thing we know we absolutely need no matter what is Usopp growth, right? And so for that to, ha and can that really happen in like 10 to 20 chapters? I like, almost has to be like, you almost have to build a conflict that Usopp can't solve. And then over the course, he figures out how to solve it. And because he does, he becomes the brave warrior of the sea, right? That's like j super, super general overview of how that kind of needs to happen. Like if Usopp just showed up and was like, let me let me go pull like the like, you know, Thor's hammer out of stone or whatever, you know, then it's like, OK, that was like really he's got to earn it a little more, I guess is what I'm saying. Like He's got to have like a moment where he fails and then succeeds. I know you've done a great Usopp video, so I know you have you know tons of thoughts on this, but that's one thing. And then the big mom thing, I agree with the antagonist part of it. Like if she just came in raging and that was like our issue in Elbaf, that's weak. That's super duper weak. Super weak. And so I think more so what Big Mom's thing is, is like just the culmination of her character arc in general. Like basically, I don't think she needs to come and be a villain. She needs to come and find out she ate Mother Carmel, you know, like that's what needs to happen. She needs to come and like be mad and, you know, then maybe there can be like a little bit of like a tiff, like they have a little bit of back and forth, like fighting or whatever. But there just needs to come to a point where someone yells, oh, it's the woman who ate all those kids and her mom all those years ago. And then she just like goes into a frenzy of like, wait, what? And then maybe that, you know, leads to her own character development in some way. Or uh, we find out, like, maybe Mother Carmel's been inside the whole time alive, whatever nonsense. 
Um, I'll say this about that. I think that Big Mom knows deep down, and I think that's why she's so traumatized by it, and she she uh, does not like yeah. talking about it, and that's why she goes crazy with the the Mother Carmel picture breaking because it's like almost like uh, you know, the illusion's gone. Like she's kind of like deluded because she's like sixty years old. Mm -hmm. She she knows how the world works. She's she's done some pretty dark shit. I think she yeah. I think thinking back on that event, I, I'm I'm sure she's smart enough to figure out what actually happened and that they didn't just like disappear magically one day. Yes. She didn't get it as a kid, but she she probably gets it now and I think that she's just refusing to address it because I agree. You know, that's like a big source of like trauma for her. Um so I don't know if, if she needs to be told, but that's just that's just me. I think yeah. I, I personally I feel like Big Mom's story is done. Like it's wrapped up. She says she's going to be back. Mm -hmm. I really hope she's wrong. And I think that if she does come back, I hope it's in like a joke capacity. Like where I've always said this, she gets like she turns into a shriveled up raisin because of the lava. There's the implication she's still alive because Zeus is still around. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's the case, you know, if she's still alive, I hope she comes back like totally nerfed and oh, not an actual threat like not a threat to anyone um I, I, it would yeah. be cool if she kind of looked like mother carmel you know what i mean like she got so uh, yeah. drained and she looks kind of like mother carmel now and and what if somebody from elbaf says that oh she looks like the woman that big mom ate all those years ago not knowing it's big <laughs> mom and then big mom like that's the because because i do agree with you that she probably has reasoned with herself like i must have ate them like i you know what i yeah. mean like like i got her powers that how else would that have had like she's probably his reason right through she it, knows but, how devil fruits work like yeah. how how'd you get the powers right like, but but i still think like somebody who who says like i saw that happen or something she would just like lose her freaking mind especially because strusen also knows and he probably has never told her right because that, that would just be a death sentence to tell her that i would assume yeah so i think that would also be really crazy where we just we also because it's not like a big deal but i think learning a little bit about who strusen actually is and what he has actually been plotting is also kind of needed not like super necessary but he clearly like you know had plans with big like he was like misleading her to some degree like or using her to get you know to the position he's at now the head chef or whatever you know what i mean yeah but but he knew and never told her and it's like hey who is this weird guy that just popped up out of nowhere on elbaf and had these cook cook powers and you know what i mean um yeah, so I think I, it's I, a similar situation to higurashi with orochi on wano like this old yeah. person that like manipulates the next generation into like doing certain things and we know yeah. higurashi was connected to rocks obviously when big mom was a kid rocks wasn't uh you know a thing mm -hmm. probably but I'm just saying, like, there is definitely a similarity there where, like, Absolutely. this person knows something and they're they're using someone else. They're using a kid. They're manipulating a kid to, like, achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and, like, in for Higurashi, you know, she had, like, Bon Clay's clone clone fruit, which is, like, okay, that's... that We know how dangerous that can be because, like, Bon Clay was, like, tricking Alabasta citizens into hating Cobra, basically, by yeah. doing that. And so it's... And, and just the fact that somebody we know currently has that, it's like, okay, that that just builds an immediate layer of importance, kind of. And so for Strusen, I'm just like, hey, not that we've seen anyone else have the Cook Cook powers, because he's still alive, of course, like he's had it the whole time. But it's just like, when you have like a devil fruit already, and then you come in and influence them, like, th I'm like, okay, I need the story now. Like, the fact you you have this fruit, you were somehow on Elbaf, just like hiding around in the freaking forest, like near the kids' orphanage. Like, what were you doing, man? You know, and then, then you saw that happen and just immediately came up with this plan to like, you know, like, control Big Mom, basically. Like, how... Yeah. Who are you? You know what I mean? He was, like, in, he was in predator mode. I don't know what he was doing, oh, chilling by the Roman. orphanage grooming yeah he was in grooming mode like why was he there? why was he there what are you doing bro like no you looking idea. for a cupcake like i don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh god like <laughs> oh god edp man <laughs> edp strusen yeah, four four five what, yeah i don't know what's up with strusen bro uh, yeah. what the, that dude's weird he gives me yeah. like, the creeps but uh but with the rest of elbaf um so like the strusen big mom stuff like just that whole mother carmel even because mother carmel has a really close connection with the giants too and we know a lot about that because of the flashback but i feel like it's almost like the the giants should talk about it and be like 
you know, oh, we Mother Karma was so nice. We loved her. She protected our people. But what they don't know is that she's evil, right? I don't think they ever found that out. So I think they mm -hmm. need to figure out that the person they loved in this scenario is actually evil. And I think it would be really crazy if they somehow found out that Big Mom is actually like good natured. But then she's obviously has bad things because like she even before the Mother Carmel thing, she was she like killed that bear trying to like stop the fight between the bear and the, the other animal. I can't remember what it was, but she's obviously like overly aggressive at the bare minimum um yeah but but i think it'd be cool if we found out like what if mother carmel you know was like influencing big mom in some way shape or form which a lot of people have talked about because it's like the soul soul fruit of course the person who has a soul soul fruit gets eaten by another person like that's you know it's just gonna build and you you eat the soul like whenever big mom like powers up she like eats that little you know ball of soul or whatever yeah um and so i think yeah, it'd be she... really cool if just real quick sorry if the no. giants if the giants find out oh big mom is actually a good person mother carmel is the evil one it's just big mom has like this issue of some kind that isn't her fault and mother carmel is the one who actually has been doing this this whole time i think that would be a really big flip for the giants to figure out like damn we we had this wrong kind of deal yeah i still th I like i i've always been interested in that theory because it's been brought up a lot like hey you know maybe big mom's like the whole thing with amnesia right she gets amnesia and she turns nice all of a sudden yep oh, um man. that's always been interesting to me but for me i also think to a degree part of her evil nature is her and i just think it comes from her upbringing i mean mm -hmm. she was a she was a kid who had monstrous capabilities and she was a little bit of a spoiled brat you know like if she didn't sure. get what she didn't get her food she threw she threw tantrums like the hunger pangs like mm -hmm. i don't know i've never met you know i've been hungry before i've been really hungry before but i've never i've never thrown a tantrum and you know tried to kill people because i yeah. i couldn't get my food so she's still yeah. she, she had the capacity this is the thing with big mom she always had the capacity to be a monster it's it depended on who took her in and yep. unfortunately for big mom her actual parents abandoned her they didn't want anything to do with mm -hmm. her and mother carmel was just using her and wanted wanted her to be a monster because that would have benefited the world government so at the end of the day mother carmel never outright disapproved of or never outright like tried to stop big mom right accidentally killing things by being too hard and like she never played that mo ironically never played that mother role enough and yeah. like taught big mom right from wrong and then once once that happened where big mom went on a rampage what happened instead of mother carmel really scolding big mom or like helping Lin, Lin you know overcome this problem it was just like no no, no this is wow she took out an elder giant by right. herself as a kid that's really strong well we can't stop her from being this like we're not going to try and put put a stop to this what we're going to do instead we got to pack up and leave because i got to raise big mom somewhere else so, so she can be a weapon later yeah so she never put a stop to the to the problem ultimately resulted in Carmel's death and ironically and what happens next another person sees this another opportunist yep. sees the monster and is like oh i got to use the monster for my own purposes so then strusen raises big mom as as a monster and then big mom learns the world through this lens so yep. i do think that to a degree big mom is is still evil in her heart it's just the amnesia makes her you know forget who she is but I, I think Big Mom is evil. I do think there's an influence from Mother Carmel there, especially in, you know, certain behaviors or certain ideals yeah. that Big Mom has about the world and everyone being equal and sitting around the same table. That all probably came from Mother Carmel and, and her upbringing with her. But I think Big Mom did unfortunately get raised by all the wrong people and turned yep. into the monster that they saw her as, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, and I, 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 I hundred percent agree. Like, she's definitely a product of her environment, like more than yeah. probably like anyone else. I would argue because you look at Kaido; he was like boxing people, like he was like the strongest in his country or whatever. From he was like really young, it's like one of the few things we got from the flashback is that he was just like a beast, even when he was a teenager, right? Yeah, and he was like always fighting, and like you know, I mean, he he had some bad stuff happen to him too. He got like sold or whatever, like sold to the government. I forget exactly what it was, but he got captured a bunch and all that stuff, right? Like the Vodka Kingdom sold him out, basically. So he had yeah. some bad stuff happen too, but he seemed like a pretty fighting focused guy since day one. But Big Mom, like at her at her chorus core, she's like just a, like a, you know, like a, just a regular girl that, I don't know, like she's normal, relatively. Like she wants to eat a bunch and gets really mad about it, which isn't normal. But like, she's like just a nice, you know, she likes playing with her, like the pet, 
I call them pets. They were like a bear and a tiger, whatever they were. But yeah. like she had like she liked animals. Like she had like the pets or whatever. She was trying to take care of them. Like she's like a normal, nice person, generally speaking. It's just she's a product of her environment. And so I would really like if in Elbaf, like maybe she gets amnesia again, which I, I feel like the fans would not like that because I know that's that, you know, people didn't really yeah, like that in Wano. But but if it happens and it, it happens in a way where the Giants are like, wait, this is the this is the Lin Lin from all those years ago. Like this, she's this is not what we remember. And then maybe when that happens, there's like a somehow a story to tell there. We're like, oh well, right now she's acting without the influence of of Mother Carmel and whatever. And they're like, wait, Mother Carmel was really nice. What do you mean? And like there would just be like just as a way to explain what's happening. You know, like even if it doesn't, yeah. you know, save Big Mom's character or whatever. It would, I think it would just be cool to get that story. Um, and and then it, go ahead. I was about to say something. I was just gonna say total side note that just popped into my head. Notice how every Yonko, especially the original four, all were all uh, orphans, and every single yep. one of them was an orphan and a beast from childhood, basically. Yeah. Whitebeard was orphaned as a young kid, absolute monster, grew up and then became a Yonko. Big Mom, orphaned as a kid, yeah. absolute monster. Kaido, orphaned as a kid, absolute monster. Shanks, orphaned. He was found as an orphan, basically. Grew Black up and became total beast. Blackbeard now. Uh, Blackbeard. Blackbeard was also an orphan. Luffy. Uh, Luffy. Luffy's father was not in the picture. Buggy. You know, Buggy. Every Every emperor, one, dude. Every e emperor oh is an orphan. Oh, my God. Every single one was an orphan. That's so Every true. single one was a beast from a young age. Well, with the exception of, like, Buggy. But, like, you know, every single one of them was crazy, crazy strong, orphaned, and did not have any parents growing up. And this really hammers home the whole theme of Oda's storytelling, which is, like, once again, whose will do you inherit? It doesn't matter who your dad is biologically. It matters who raises you, who brings you up, who, who you learn the world from, you know? And uh, I think that made all the difference with all these different Yonkos. We have these people that... You know, some of them are evil, some of them are not, but they all started in the same situation, pretty much. Every one of them had no parents. They started out alone in this world. They started out, you know, being exceptional to a degree. And it was the people around them that molded them that turned them into who they became when they got older. So even though Kaido and Big Mom and Whitebeard all had very similar childhoods, they all became very different people when they became adults. Uh, and I, I think that's very that. important. That is really important to the theme of the that, story, like how that happened. That, they, to so. me, that, and this is a beautiful segue back to the rock stuff, because I, I do have more Elbaf stuff I want to talk about, but you know what, we'll do we'll do a separate video solely on that eventually. Because tying back to the rock stuff, I think all the, the orphan talk is, is kind of showing how important inheriting a will is, and yeah. that that does not happen with just lineage factor. Now, it does happen with lineage factor also, but... There's way more to it, and arguably the more important part is not the lineage part, but who influences you when you're young. Um, because, like, you know, I think if you look at more recently in the manga with, like, uh, the Boa Seraphim, remember how S. Snake helped Luffy and, and, uh, and, like, it didn't listen to orders? And so Vegapunk's like, oh, I gotta write this down. Like, uh, the lineage factor goes way further than I thought. I had no idea. So there's, like, evidence where the lineage factor, like, DNA-wise, does in factor into the will. Like, the reason yeah. that the S snake has that feeling about Luffy is because of where the DNA is coming from, which is from Boa, right? That, like, no doubt. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that if you go have a kid, it's going to have the same, you know, like, it, like the kid's not going to carry your will automatically. you got to go do some work to make that happen. And in a story with a million deadbeat dads, it seems like. Yeah, that, that that's a really important lesson, I feel like, because it's like all these guys who weren't around for their kid. It's like, look what happened, dude. Like they didn't become anything you wanted them to. Your influence would have made them maybe a better person. Some cases, a worse person. Some cases, a better, you know, Oda does both of them. But it's like if you wanted your kid to be what you thought they were going to be, you should have done something about it. You know, you should. Yeah, it, it, it's, Go ahead. It's like with every character. It's like Sanji, Ace, Sabo. Like, like all the big, all the big shots in the world, like have that same kind of upbringing and they're molded by the people around them. Law, same thing with yes. law, same thing with, uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure kid was an orphan too. I'm, yep, I'm, if yep. I'm not mistaken. And, and, and killer, I think kid, kid and killer were orphans. Uh, Usopp was orphaned at a young age. Uh, uh Robin not, technically, like, Robin. I, what, now it wasn't cause her family. Well, he, honestly, even though, you know, O'Hara happened, 
she was still an orphan before that. Like, her, her, yeah, yeah, she, she was just by herself. She was an orphan before that, but she got her, you know, life lessons from the the, the scholars of O'Hara and from Saul. And uh, now Nami. she's the one who read the poneglyphs. It's just yep, so beautiful. Nami, Zoro, like straight everybody, dude. everybody. Chopper was ab abandoned by his parents when he was a dude, kid. Is everybody an orphan in One Piece, dude? Everyone is an orphan in One e Piece, except for, crazy, Bonnie. Right? except for except Bonnie. Except for Bonnie. Except for Bonnie. And there's, it, there's like the few exceptions where they had like someone actually has a good parent growing up and it like has a very different impact on their life. But it's like it's interesting just to think about, you know, what maybe what Oda's trying to say with that. Like literally every single pirate, every single person that's fighting to change the world was orphaned as a kid and then had to I get their ra their worldviews from someone who imparted onto them how the world should be. Right. They, they learned how the world should be or what's important in life from someone else that wasn't necessarily their parent. Um, I think that's just an interesting. It didn't really come together until we were talking about it. But like, yeah, that's yeah, interesting right. that pretty much everybody, um, even Momo, you know, he he lost his parents at a very young age. You know, like it goes for everybody. Yeah, that and and it's a perfect segue to what we were we were talking about at the beginning, which was Rocks and Blackbeard's connection. Because th this is this everything we just said is why I think no way is Rocks directly related to Blackbeard, like a like a parent child, like. I mean, Oda doesn't need to do this. Could they be like cousins or something, like some deeper, you know, ancestral thing? Maybe, you know what I mean? But I, I don't think they should be related at all because like you don't need to be. There, there is no reason to be, right? Like it, yeah. it, it's almost a negative to be related. <laughs> like if you yeah. want, if Rox wants his will inherited, it, I'm, and I'm so glad we're talking about this because I said this in the video, but not, not as well as you just said with all the examples. But like, if you have a kid, that's almost like a death sentence as far as getting the kid to be like you in one piece yeah if you want yeah. that you got to go find a like not not in like a grooming way which like maybe some <laughs> like strusen did but you need to go find a, a kid to influence yourself like and to make inherit your will like if you go save a kid and he just is on your ship like with shanks and, and buggy on rogers they're going to inherit the will because you're influencing them every day same thing with mother carmel and all the, all the other examples we just said and so that's why you know yeah blackbeard Whatever the connection is, he's just got to be someone who tangentially found out about rocks. You know what I mean? And just was like, oh, so if I like if I want or like I want to be like him or or conversely, maybe rocks told him like you could be like me one day. Like well, one of the two, you know what I mean? Where it's just like Blackbeard found out about rocks and wanted to become him, basically. Not not that he was told since day one, you need to be him or or you're supposed to be him or whatever. Right. Like. It, it could have been as simple as, as Blackbeard being on Whitebeard's crew for so long and then just like, I know Whitebeard doesn't like talking about it, but you know, every now and then maybe a story gets passed around. Hey, you know, Whitebeard used to be on this crew, Rocks, and they talk about it, you know, little whispers here and there talking a little bit about Rocks and maybe Blackbeard picked up on this information over the years and was like, hey, this Rocks guy sounds, uh, he sounds pretty smart. Like, he sounds smarter than my captain. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 he's like, I, I kind of like him more than, than Whitebeard. You know, I would have liked to work with him instead. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe little by little picking up these, because we know he likes history, picking up all these little pieces of history. Right. Blackbeard ends up taking after him in that way. And then, you know, as a captain himself over the years, has probably gone out of his way to like look for more information on rocks, find out more about him. You know, he learns about mm -hmm. Pirate Island, and then, you know, he goes and meets Wang Shi there, presumably, and maybe had a conversation with Wang Shi that we didn't hear. Right. That maybe told Blackbeard a little bit something more about what Rox was like. And, you know, he could have been learning it totally by proxy through a bunch of other characters that met him. It didn't have to be, like, someone going out of their way to influence Blackbeard. I mean, there's many ways it could go. I, I could easily see, you know... Blackbeard doesn't sleep, right? So let's yep. say there let's say Whitebeard was having a late night conversation on the ship in private like in closed quarters that was not meant to be heard by other people, like maybe Blackbeard or Whitebeard was talking to Marco about rocks in private. And Blackbeard not not sleeping, maybe listened in on the conversation through the door, you know, I, something I like, like that. Idea. You know, that could that could have been how he got all this knowledge. So yeah, I I guess my one question would be like we know that Blackbeard wanted the dark dark fruit since like day one. Like the reason he got on Teach's crew was or Teach's crew on Whitebeard's crew was to because that was his best chance to get that fruit. So I guess because I, I like the idea that uh, like maybe a lot of his rocks information just came while being on Whitebeard's crew, but it seems like something had to be implanted, you know, when he was yeah. really young. And so 
Now, could that just be a simple thing where like maybe he heard about the devil fruit separately and then heard about rocks after the fact? And then, you know, like while on Whitebeard's crew, he's like, oh, I, the, I should do this once I get this dark fruit. Like I should go and, you know, X, Y, and Z. Like I only had this part of my plan figured out, but now because of this, I have the rest of it. I, I can actually see that. I guess that might feel a little anticlimactic depending on the dark, dark fruit thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but, but at the same time, I like it because we've already had uh, like, like, remember when Marco said that, like, Whitebeard talked about the Lunarians? Like, he, he talked about, like, a fire-controlling race on the red line or whatever. Yep. Well, whenever whenever Blackbeard was on Amazon Lily, he said he, like, knew about the Lunarians. Like, whenever he looked at the Seraphim, he's like, wait, dark skin, white hair, fire? Like, are Lunarians? Like, he was like, he knew. And so that that may be a little bit of evidence there that he was overhearing some of Whitebeard's conversations. You know. Now, yeah. Now was Whitebeard just drunk and talking out loud, and everyone heard it? Also possible, but that doesn't really matter. Like Blackbeard's getting influenced by that information either way. It doesn't really matter if it's yep. secret or not. So I kind of like that actually. Yeah, I mean, he he could have also like, I mean, he might be well read. Like we we have no idea. Before he was on the crew, mm -hmm. he might have spent his time reading books. And uh, he could have read the Devil Fruit, Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, just like Sanji, you know. Mm -hmm. Sanji told us at a young age he would go through the encyclopedia, and he saw yeah. one fruit that for him stood out as like, oh, I need this. I need the invisibility power. So Blackbeard, as a kid, had many sleepless nights, you know, maybe was a well-read guy, might have picked up the encyclopedia and looked through it and was like... You know how can what 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 fruit would I need to make my life better? What fruit would yeah. I need to 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 get what I want in this life? And maybe he saw the dark dark fruit and was like, "Oh man, this negates other devil fruit powers. This has to be the the best devil fruit ever." Right. Like, I, I, I like if that. I ever see that, I need that because that would make me instantly the strongest if I can just cancel out other devil fruits. Because for him, devil fruits are everything. Mm -hmm. Um. But so yeah, maybe he maybe he just read about it and was like, oh, I need that. That's that's his yeah. like Sanji's invisibility fruit, you know. And and and, uh, and I guess the thing to kind of build onto that is like he also seemed to know he could have two devil fruits, you know, because I mean he went under the tarp and he just went for it. And so that's another layer where like okay, even if he looked in the encyclopedia on how to get like the dark dark fruit, which I I think is reasonable, it's like well he still had he has to know something that apparently nobody else knows. You know about how to get this other fruit now it might be because of his special body or his race or whatever his you know, bloodline the yeah. bloodline that they talked yeah. about recently in egghead yeah oh i think that's uh i think that's probably of a buccaneer connection personally because buccaneer. because how many times have they mentioned the buccaneer blood by now like when kuma was born like his blood oh i know i won't tell anybody then whenever he goes to vegapunk it's like oh your blood is special oh what's so special about it oh i can't tell you yet i'll do some research like, like they, they've mentioned it on a few different occasions, and then I, what I think that leads to is green blood. Like, the Ooh. buccaneer blood is probably what gave him the resources necessary to make green blood. Maybe it is just green, and that's where it starts, or maybe Vegapunk, you know, manipulated it to be green. But, um, yeah. But the, but the thing I, I'm wondering is, you know, that let you basically put Paramecia powers, specifically Paramecia like you into other people like duplicating it you know what i mean like you can spread the powers across multiple people and the second fruit that blackbeard got was the gura gura which is a paramecia and so i'm yeah. almost wondering does he have green blood and he just imbued that fruit into his green blood and so he has he's like a walking living seraphim or whatever because he has that kind of blood you know what I mean? we've seen him bleed before it's red but yeah. I, w I will say that to this idea that it could be like the fact that maybe it's like a combination like if he does have buccaneer dna if he if it's like the combo of being a buccaneer and a d member that allows him somehow that we don't know yet it allows him to have more than one devil fruit power which is why he's so dangerous mm -hmm. i could see that alternatively it's uh, it, the the bloodline thing could just be a reference to the d clan and maybe the reason that the d clan are so special that nobody knows except for maybe Roger and maybe Blackbeard at this point is that they can use more devil fruits. So like the, the reason the D clan is so much of a threat to the, to the gods is that they're not impacted by devil fruits the same way that everyone else is. And Roger didn't have a devil fruit. So it could be like a couple implications there. You know, Blackbeard wants nothing but devil fruits and law said like, Hey, that's a big problem. If you ever fall into the sea, yeah. 
for Roger, maybe he didn't want that weakness. But Roger did know what the D stood for. He was going to tell Whitebeard about it. Yeah, or he, he did, right? But And he did tell Whitebeard. Yeah. And then and Whitebeard was like, hey, I have someone with a D on my crew, Teach. So even in that conversation, yeah. he's referencing Teach. And it could be that the whatever the D stands for, uh, that could hold some implications. Whatever the D-Clan really is... That could also mean maybe something like, yeah. yeah, maybe they could use more than one devil fruit. That could also open up the possibility that if that information comes out, other D members might start racking up more than one devil oh. fruit power. You know, like it might not I, just be teach, that, it, you know? Th th no, that, that's interesting because like in my mind, the like, I I don't think the D clan is going to be like a uh, like a like a race, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I envision it more as like a group of individuals just like agreed to take the d initial as like a way to show that they're a part of the same group and then it just sure. then it passes on familially after that you know like monkey d garp to monkey d dragon to monkey d Lu like it obviously it carries but i think some evidence for that too is like the sabo thing where like it was like oh you can be sa d bo you know it's like like if the person yeah. has the right will you can just kind of pass it over but i still like the idea though that like like, what if, like, the Marshall D's specifically, like, his family of D's, like, or whatever descendant starting back at the original D clan, like, what if they were the really special ones? So, like, basically, not that all D members can have multiple, because, like, it seems like people can just kind of take the D initial if they want it. But maybe there was, like, kind of like with the, uh, the Wano families, how, like, they were all mostly good, but there was one really bad one that technically was a Wano Daimyo family, just like the others, you know, they're all kind of even, but one was special and evil and like special, like not in a powerful way, but just like they were like they were trying different. to take over. And so I'm wondering if that's the same thing with Blackbeard and, and maybe it's not necessarily the D itself, but just like that initial iteration of the D, like the, the first member he got in his family that got the D, they might have a, you know, a special thing because I think the uh, the lineage part, the bloodline, whatever you know that Saturn talked about. I think that's the snowy country thing. That's that's my guess on it. No. That like, um, you know, like oh, because he probably doesn't know that. Because remember how Shanks went to the Gorosei and was like, I need to talk to you about a certain pirate. I think he was like Blackbeard's from this race, and that's why he can do X, Y, and Z. And they're like, oh shit, you know, like, we didn't know that. That's what could, could could I run with this idea just for a second? Go for I have it. Two, two examples come to mind as what could be a cool dual devil fruit combo on a d clan member that that's not go blackbeard so go for it. let's go 800 years ago we have nefertari d lily and sh somehow lily scattered the poneglyphs now we know about the whole um the rio poneglyph which is every poneglyph put together that contains the true message right so the question was like how did lily s spread the poneglyphs around the world uh well the you know I, I think it was randy's idea i'm not sure where the idea came from but the idea that she had the paw paw fruit back then mm -hmm. and she like pawed all the poneglyphs to everywhere they needed to go well if they were all maybe let's say one big original poneglyph or something like that it could have been like lily had a combination of the op op fruit and the paw yeah. paw fruit so she op op the poneglyphs into a bunch of tinier blocks then sent them everywhere and yeah. then like in the present timeline let's say luffy if Luffy ever got a second fruit, what would it be? I think it's got to be the Mera Mera. It's got to be Ace's fruit. And if yeah. he realized that he could have more than one devil fruit, people might immediately like flinch at this idea like, oh, Luffy with another devil fruit power? That, that would be like, in you know, fly in the face of mm -hmm. the, the gum gum. But like, you know, what if Luffy does hit a ceiling with Gear 5 that he can't surpass against Emu? And how would he, how would he do that? Well, you have... Ace's fruit that Ace died, it went to Sabo. If Sabo dies, the fruit would go from Ace's or it would go from Luffy's two brothers to him. So it would go from right. Ace to Sabo to Luffy. And I'm not sure if the ages met. Is Sabo the oldest of the three? I'm not sure. But if it does work out where the ages, like Ace was the oldest and the fruit kind of like goes down to the youngest brother. Um, and it did, it was ASL, so Ace, Sabo, Luffy. So it is that order. Mm -hmm. And if Luffy gets the fire fruit and manages to use two devil fruit powers, I think it would be pretty cool just because of the idea of him being the sun god, right? If he's the sun god and he's able to like shoot fire on top of all of his other abilities, he's already doing the Red Hawk. He's doing all these things that include fire kind of. So mm -hmm. like, I think it would complete it where like Ace's moves, like, you know, uh, he was versing Blackbeard, and Blackbeard said, "Who's gonna win? The uh, what's gonna win? The sun or the darkness?" So it's like 
yeah, maybe if if it's a D clan thing, by the end of the story, Sabo might die, and then Luffy will inherit that power from Sabo from his two brothers, and then use he'll become the true sun god. Mm -hmm. He'll be he'll yeah. be able to do all the Nika things plus fire on top of that, and then you know yeah. I think that could be like a sick thing to do. Yeah, I think. I, the one problem I would have with that is that it takes away from, like, the specialty of Blackbeard. Like, it's like if multiple people can do what Blackbeard's doing. But at the same time, that just that might be the whole point of the plot is, like, oh, Blackbeard knew this secret before everyone else and he took advantage, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. But I, I do agree that if, if there was one for Luffy to get, it would definitely be the Mara Mara, like, no question. And a big reason why is because, like, Luffy has sun god powers, but has no sun powers. Uh, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's no fire. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. He, like, and I know he has Red Hawk and all that, and I know, you know, some people are going to think about that immediately, but, like, okay, that's, like, that's not fire powers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when you turn into fire and just, like, you know, have, like, a giant fireball in your hand, like, uh, like Flame Emperor, you know, then, okay, or Entei, what, same thing. Um, so... Well, and then this is honestly a really good segue, I think, into some rock stuff, which I, I do want to get back to just rapid fire through. So first off, tying into this, what do you think Rock's devil fruit power was if he had one or devil fruits, plural, tying back into this this whole thing? Uh, I'm leaning towards hockey man right now. Okay, no devil fruit. I just feel like if he had a devil fruit... uh people would have commented on one of the other current like if yeah. someone else has rox's devil fruit someone would have made a comment and if if that's not the case if he did have a devil fruit that devil fruit was erased from history the same way he was after yeah. rock died someone in the world government or someone got a hold of his devil fruit and got rid of it or stored it somewhere maybe in the, the same vault where the giant straw hat is because I can't imagine after the world government hated rocks and dealt with rocks and they wanted to wipe him from history that they'd let whatever power yeah. he had just like roam the ocean. So if he didn't, I think that if no one else has his devil fruit power currently, it's one of two situations, hockey man, or they erased his fruit as well. Uh, okay. So, and so going on the idea of erased his fruit, do you think, that they could have erased it in a more roundabout way where it's like Luffy's, where they just named it something else because it has powers bigger than it actually does. I think yeah, that's... Yeah, it could that, be cause I name agree change. With you. Yeah. It, yeah, it, I think that would work. That would it, work. Because it's kind of like the idea with like, uh, when people are like, did Roger have the gum gum fruit? I'm like, well, if he did, I'm dropping one piece. <laughs> yeah. Because like somebody yeah. had to have said it by now and yeah. the anticlimacticness of it all, you know what I mean? Like there's no way... That would be so tropey it would suck yeah exactly yeah. um and so so yeah I'm, I'm in a similar boat where like if it is a fruit it's gotta be or if he did have a fruit it's gotta be one that we just have not seen yet you know or or if we did it's incredibly obscure and oda purposely left it obscure and we're gonna come back and realize it's way better than we thought and the name is different like there's like those are like the only two ways because like going into the multiple devil fruit powers idea I, that's almost impossible for rocks because like, if he had multiple we absolutely should have seen one by now or heard of yeah one. you know like that's like way too much so um but if but you know if he did have one i feel like like i feel like a logia wouldn't make sense because the government keeps most of them you know what i mean like the mara mara is like the only one really that's like been out and about like for the most part so i kind of like that but that would somebody would have to bring that up by now like, what if what, it would be cool if Roger's kid got his rival's fruit, you know what I mean? But what if the reason Blackbeard wanted Boa's fruit is because Boa's power was Rox's power and uh that's why his name was Rox <laughs> cuz he could turn yeah, people, people to rocks. rocks. I I uh <laughs> I unironically like that. I'm not going to lie yeah. to you. Uh Yeah. So that so, so I'm tr I've been trying to do this video for a while now. So apologies to all the viewers who uh, who have heard me say this probably ten times. But I'm trying to do a video about the six devil fruits at God Valley uh, in those different chests because I think, without a doubt, those are six of the most important fruits in One Piece. Because like if if they were collected into one place at this big climactic event, and the two we've seen are as important as they are, being Kaido's and Kuma's, like the other four have to be astronomically important in my mind. Um, yeah. And I think that Boa's fruit, it, Boa's fruit's actually one of my guarantees. I have two guarantees, and then the other two, I'm not sure. 
And the Boa's fruit's one of my guarantees because, well, we already know the government had it and gave it to Boa you know, when she was Boa. a slave, right? So mm -hmm. that that's our, that already puts it together. But also, so I, I think it might be one in the chest, but if it's not one in the chest, and I like the idea that Rox had it because... It was Rox's. Yeah, because he, I, just tying to the... His name is freaking Rox. And his Black, name is Rox. And Blackbeard wanted to... Well, we don't know for sure, but it seems like Blackbeard maybe wanted to unpetrify somebody who's been petrified before. Like... We don't know 100%, but Boa went out of her way to say, like, oh, well, if you kill me, all your buddies are going to stay stoned forever. And it's like a gamble right there where Blackbeard has to, like, try, like, Blackbeard, that might be a hint to Blackbeard. Oh, well, maybe I can't use hers for what I wanted to do with it. You know, that kind of thing. Because, um, like, just, you know, an Oda, Oda signaling, I guess, to yeah. us. And uh, and so that maybe he, maybe Rox did get turned to stone, uh, like, by his own powers or, or something. You know, and I, I don't know. Well, we don't even know what the awakening looks like. Like, if Rox had it, it was probably awakened. Mm -hmm. So no one would have, yeah. like, had alarm bells about Boa because she wasn't doing with her powers what Rox is doing with his powers. Mm -hmm. So... It and so, and there's one other fruit that I that I want to throw out there um, that I know is going to sound really crazy, but just going back to my video before this, and I mentioned this at the beginning, I think Bonnie's fruit is actually an underrated choice because, for one thing, we didn't even know the name until recently, which like that only matters so much. But it's like Oda was like purposefully hiding it, you know. And it, all it ended up being was the age age fruit. It's not like it was a big deal. So I thought that yeah. was just kind of a weird thing, like oh maybe this is really important. But the other thing is that, just like Boa's fruit, the government had Bonnie's fruit whenever they ran the experiments on on Jenny and her, sure. right? Like they, so there's that could be the answer right there. That's why they kept it, and that's why they were running experiments with it because they knew how important that fruit was. Like, hey, we need to make sure we're using this to its like utmost potential for us, whatever way that is. Yeah. Which, which what they said they were doing was basically using an extract so that the child, like the baby, could get the powers because like. I don't know if you can just, you, apparently you can't turn the devil fruit to baby food and just feed it to the baby, apparently, <laughs> I, I, I guess. So they'd use an extract or whatever to give the powers to a baby because you have more potential as a baby, right? The younger you are, the more potential outcomes you have. And so the fruit is better with a young person, basically. And so I'm wondering if maybe Rox also had that power. And now it'd be weird that Bonnie was allowed to go out into the world with those powers. That's like the one issue with it. But I think that's kind of weird already, given the, the emphasis they put on it. You know what I mean? Like they made that deal with Kuma and were like, even though we had yeah. a lot of emphasis on those powers she has, we're just going to let her go, which I think is weird. But but I yeah. think, uh, but it, and the main reason why I like this is because for one thing, the awakening's probably insane. It's it with the right person with the right mindset who has like like literal unlimited dreams or whatever you know what i mean like a big imagination that fruit would be un unreal strong like you wouldn't yeah. even know it's the age age fruit you know what i mean like like people who saw rocks use it back in the day if he ha if he was using it to its utmost potential they probably wouldn't know he's just aging himself like if he turned like let's say he turned in like nika like got a giant rubber fist and was huge they're not going to think, oh, he's got the age age fruit and he's aging himself into Nika. They're going to think he's got right. a rubber fruit or, or you know, whatever he's doing. So that's that. So to me, it could it could disguise what fruit it was. So that kind of answers that. So they don't know Bonnie has the same one yet. And the government had it. So that's and also he could age up Teach, even if Teach was a baby and talk to him, which we don't know yet. If when you're young, if you get aged up, do you get smarter? Like, do you get the mentality of an older person? We know with Momo, that doesn't happen with Shinobu's fruit. But with Bonnie's, we only know the opposite isn't true. Like, if you're old and get turned to a baby, you're still smart. Like, you still have your intelligence. But we don't know the opposite. The only example I think we really have is Bonnie, right? Because Bonnie is 12, but pretending to be 24. And I, personally, I would argue, like, sneaking into the reverie, being a pirate on the Grand Line, all that stuff fighting these you know strong people i feel like she's mentally probably like a bit older than 12 it just feels that way and it would feel weird to have the momo limitation with shinobus and not be able to change that with bonnie's like bonnie yeah. bonnie can probably turn momo to 28 mentally i guess is what i'm thinking so um so basically yeah i think rocks may have had it and just it, he just turned it into whatever he wanted the imagination fruit you know I like that. I like that because uh, it helps my Lafitte theory because there's the question of how did Lafitte fake his age, and because oh. you know, you know, if if Lafitte was on the Rocks crew uh, as a different person, you know, back then, it could have been that Rocks aged him down and was like, okay, you know, you go go do the work, you know, like you got you got forty years, go go find us, uh, go find my successor, 
Um, that, that's kind of you know, cool. Age, and, aged him down, and then uh, and now Lafitte's current age is I think forty two or something like that. Uh huh. So because it doesn't stay permanently, but the awakening, who we don't the awakening, know, right? Yeah. Might be a perma de aging. So it could have been that where like Lafitte got de aged. So I, I actually think that helps. And, I like that idea. And I haven't even really thought about it in this like macro scale of it, but like whenever Bonnie got fully introduced and we started learning about her powers and the kuma stuff that's when we learned about god valley right like we knew a little yeah. bit about it but like it was in the midst like literally saturn like holding bonnie when that starts right like right after his form reveal and he's like holding like you know they're like fighting or like he's like letting her punch him or whatever but you know what i mean like they're fighting yeah. and then that's what led to the god valley flashback so i kind of like it more where it's like like, hey, like, Bonnie, you have no idea how important your powers are. Like, not only because of the right. Nika stuff, but because it was Rox's powers. Like, I think that would be really insane. Um, and it's just, I don't know. Like, it, he also mentioned how, like, the fruit is useless now. That's what he's, that's what Saturn said. Like, we gave you the extract, now the fruit's useless. I think that would just be really crazy if, like, like, Rox's fruit, like, the last person who will ever get Rox's fruit is Bonnie, because, like, it's just gone now. I, I, however, whatever experiment they did. Kind of got erased in that way, right? Like, if they wanted to erase it, get rid of it, that that's oh. how they would do it. If Bonnie dies, then the fruit goes with her. Maybe that was the plan. Like, we'll just, like, because they said it was, like, the, or they tied it to the, you're younger and have more possibilities thing. But I like yeah. that, that idea more is like, they were trying to find a permanent way to like get rid of it. So it doesn't reincarnate. Cause it's so dangerous. Or it could be the one thing that turns them younger. Cause they're like immortal. You know what I mean? Or the like, uh, and like whatever eternal youth surgery or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just going to do rapid fire. A couple of these other questions. Cause I know we're getting close to the ending time here. Um, sure, bro. do you think, so we talked about the devil fruit, but outside of that, do you think rocks was like, like a swordsman? a brawler type fighter do you think he was like shanks where like shanks is a swordsman but he's kind of like more of a hockey man like he doesn't even need to pull the sword out sometimes you know what i mean so what what do you think where do you think he fits on the fighting spectrum i want him to be a brawler Same. i want him to just because blackbeard isn't a swordsman and uh i like that. characters that fight with their fists like i think it's cool and and roger was a swordsman sword roger was a swordsman so like if it's you know whitebeard had his uh um i forget what it's whatever. called well i don't know i'm blanking too right now but he had his like spear basically i'm, I'm gonna just call it that i know that's not what yeah, it is. i'm like gonna look it up because it's killing me but it yeah his uh, well he, murakumo giri is the name of it yes, the, the, the name, nag but, naginata uh, yeah the, he okay yeah so whitebeard had his naginata roger had his sword so like i would be happy if rocks didn't use a sword also It'd just kind of be a little bit redundant mm -hmm. uh if he fought with his fists if he was a good fighter in that respect, and it was like fists and hockey, kind of like Luffy, I would be, I'd be down with that. And, I think that'd be. And, yeah. what, and what's so ironic about that is the, you know, we, we talked a lot earlier about the saber of Zebek, the ship that Blackbeard has. It's literally sabers like the type of sword. That's like the, that's what that's the type of sword that uh, Roger has, right? I think that's technically yeah. a saber. And yeah. so it's like, it, like is the ship his weapon you know is that is that so so going back to the idea of like is the ship like a battleship like is he like a shipwright or is he like his designs quote unquote whatever that really means like was his ship just his weapon or like what if what if the ship could transform like what if it was a sword but it had a ship fruit or like a zone ship fruit and then and so maybe like the sword broke during battle and that's why the ship won't work anymore but blackbeard's like i don't know I'm trying to figure it out um but yeah the fact it's saber is really weird to me mainly it could be an ironic name it could be like you know he doesn't have an act he doesn't actually have a sword so like they named the ship like the ship is the like the the sword like they they like gave it the name because he doesn't actually have one I, so oh, I, I i like that and one one other maybe funny idea is like what if like the sword is made of wood like what if it's an adam wood sword in which, like, you wouldn't, you know, you would use metal most of the time, but if you got Adam Wood, and maybe that's why it's like the Saber of Zebek, because it's like a wooden ship, but maybe it could actually turn into a sword or whatever, but it's all still wooden, and it was, like, super weird. Which, like, I, I almost feel like a stone sword would make more sense, because he's rocks. You know, you know what I mean? Right, right. But, but still, uh, I don't he know. He picks up, he has a hilt on the back of the ship, he can pick up the whole ship yeah. as a sword. Yeah. Just swing it around. Yeah, like the, uh... Like the the like the helm of the ship is maybe just like a because I think 
the Oreo Jackson just had like a straight pointing. No, it had like a. Gr there's a there's a prominent ship that has like a just like a pointy thing pointing out the front of it. I can't. Yeah, the bowsprit. It, yeah, it, it, is, it, is that the Oreo Jackson? The Oreo Jackson, yeah, it has a has a like a bowsprit that actually yeah. reaches out in front. So like maybe he picks it up by the bowsprit and just it like just, swings it. Yeah. <laughs> or crazy. Or maybe his powers let him turn objects into other things. Like that I, could be cool. Like like going back to uh, like the Bonnie's fruit idea. Like it could just be an imagination thing. He can just grab the ship and just turn it into whatever he wants using his imagination. You know. So I kind of like sick. that. Um, all right. Next question: Who do you think Rox's first crewmate was? That's a good question. Um, His first hmm. mate. If it's not a character that we haven't seen yet, then I'd have to, I'd have to guess. Whitebeard was his first recruit, uh, and I think it's purely because of how they're lined up on the rocks page, like in God Valley, mm -hmm. where Whitebeard is front and center. He's like at the front of the group, and. Uh, I think I think the first two members of the Rocks crew were Whitebeard and Shiki. And if if okay. if I had to guess, and the reason is just because of how they're lined up on that page and their dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Mom and Kaido kind of have like their like a older younger sibling thing going on. Yep. Uh, and we know that Big Mom was rolling around with Strusen for a while, so it's a little bit like I think they have their own thing prior to Rocks. Um, but with Whitebeard, you know, Whitebeard was always seeking a family. He's, you know, been in the game for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. We know that he's been a pirate ever since he was a kid, basically. Uh, and you have Shiki and Whitebeard. Like, Shiki's kind of shit-talking Whitebeard. Like, you know, Whitebeard's like... Uh, he Whitebeard is the one at the front of the group, and he's saying, Rocks, you know, don't think I'm your follower. So, like, yeah. Whitebeard kind of, like, has this, like, leadership role in a way. Yep. Uh, and, and Shiki says something about, like, don't go acting like the leader now. So, like, yep. that could be, like, a first mate implication there where it's, like, Whitebeard is the second in command. So, Shiki being, like, the Sanji to Whitebeard Zoro is, like, you know, mm -hmm. taking issue with Whitebeard taking on that role and, like, doesn't want to listen to him and do his own I thing. Like that. Uh, we know that Cheeky, you know, had that rivalry with Roger at one point, and it was almost like Roger, Whitebeard, Cheeky for yeah. a while. There was like that triangle. Yep. So, like, if that's the case, it could have been Whitebeard and Cheeky were the the two and three of the, the Rocks crew. The wings, yeah. That's kind of yeah. where I'm where I'm at with that. Although it's like very little evidence, I just exactly. think that like if anyone on the crew were, were in those roles, I, I think it would be Whitebeard and Cheeky. I, I I like that, and I probably agree. But I think the one caveat that I think is worth bringing up is in in Blackbeard's crew, it seems like I think there's a good debate on who his wings are and his first mates because usually the first mate is one of the wings, right? Like yeah, like Rayleigh, Zoro, you know, like it's 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 always that way. Um, but and King for, for Kaido. Um, but the thing is for Blackbeard, I, it's a little wishy-washy because I think that Burgess is the first mate because he's the first Titanic captain. We know that he was among the initial group we saw with Blackbeard. And also yep. um, there was like this line when, when Burgess found Baltigo after Dressrosa, he was talking to Lafitte and Lafitte was like, I can't remember the exact dialogue, but basically Burgess called him Captain Teach and Lafitte was like, it's uh, it's Commodore. And he's Commodore, like, he's like, ah, yeah. oh, shut up. Like, I'm gonna keep calling him whatever I want, basically. Like he kept calling him Captain Teach. So it gives me the vibe that like they're so close, he doesn't need to call him by the official title. He can just say Captain and it's fine, or you know, or just teach in general. Like it doesn't matter. I so agree. They, yeah. They have that closeness. So but the thing is, is like, is Burgess one of the wings? Like, I would probably say yes. However, usually the wings are your two strongest people. And I think at this point, Shiryu and Kuzan are the top two for sure. Because like, well, he already said Shiryu was the second strongest before Kuzan was even mentioned as a f official crew member. Back in like that one cover story, he had like an SBS and was like, I was just putting the second strongest on the cruise is basically what he said. And so that said that Shiryu is then the sec, you know, the, the Zoro of the crew in terms of strength in that regard. But then you add Kuzan to the mix. And so now I feel like there's a weird situation where you have two people that are stronger than the first mate, which is not normal. And no, no disrespect to Burgess. I'm really pumped for that fight, but yeah, um, I so feel like awkward. with Blackbeard's crew and maybe Roxas too, that they didn't have a strict like first, first, second, third. Mm -hmm. I, I think that like Blackbeard's crew is an amalgamation of people with aligned interests, but yep. they're also willing to betray each other if worse comes to worst. Mm -hmm. So they're not really like a cohesive crew in that respect. I think they're just like a group of people that all have different 
um agendas. i don't know agendas but their their goal their main goal aligns so blackbeard isn't really he's not thinking about he doesn't have wings he doesn't need wings for him mm -hmm. he doesn't need he actually doesn't need people to like carry him in the way that luffy needs his crewmates behind him i think they're yeah. just like all working together but it's not like a hey you know i'm making you second in command you take over for me if i'm not here like if if i'm yeah. not here you know it's like there's no point to doing this in the first place that's really what it comes uh, down to for blackbeard yeah no. so because the thing is is like out of all the options i would honestly say that lafitte should be a wing maybe yeah. more than any even aside from your theory because like he's always had an outstandingly important role in things like he wasn't even there in the initial crew introduction because he was out doing something he snuck into marie joie and, and and spoke on blackbeard's behalf whenever kuzan was there he's the one over there in the corner talking to teach like hey man his fruit's yep. really good on his we, shoulder. Should, we should be considering that and he's also the chief of staff chief which of like staff. which sabo is the number two of the entire revolutionary army because he's the chief of staff nobody else has that really I think I think yeah. maybe one other I think it's been mentioned maybe in like a movie or something. But like those are the only two chief of staffs we've really heard of that are prominent in the story. Uh Treble. Treble was Treble. Chief of Staff. That's it. That that was it. That was it. Yeah, and I, then I knew there was one. there was um what's his name on Buggy's crew? The chief of staff there's there's a page with all the chief of staffs. Every chief of staff is either number two or three. Every time. Exactly. And so and, and yeah, and there's only been like a like a handful of them, but they mm -hmm. but in all of it they they stand out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they so because even Treble, as much as I hate him, it's like I mean he 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 was there since day one. You know what I mean? Like he gave Dopey his fruit. Exactly. Like he yeah. literally day one he's been in it's Kabaji on on Buggy's crew. It's Kabaji, yep. right? Yeah. And, and uh, and hold on, is and also uh, Suru is that's what this that's what she's on the page. Oh, she's called the Great Staff Officer. That's like your epithet. Well, yeah, I mean that also works for for Suru because it was Suru, Garp, and Sengoku were like the trio, yeah. and Sengoku was the fleet admiral. Garp is the hero of the Marines, and then Suru was the chief of staff. Right? Like it's yeah. always it's it's always a two or three position. I feel like with with the yeah. chief of staff role. Yeah, yeah, it is. And so so when we talk about like like I would have said originally Burgess and Lafitte are the wings, but now it's almost like Shiryu and Kuzan are kind of the new ones. But like but like you said, I don't think Blackbeard necessarily needs wings in that way. It's like for him, it's like everyone has their role where it's like in, in the straw hats, it's like they, they also have their roles, but it's even like outsized a little bit where it's like Sanji and Zoro are like the the captain when the captain's not there. You know what I mean? But it's almost yeah. like Blackbeard I don't know. It's like a totally different feel to the whole situation. You know, like the, he has plans, you know what I mean? Like he has well orchestrated, you know, like everyone knows what they're doing on a given play where like you almost have to figure it out on the straw hats all the time. Yeah. So Cause they're not they're not planning things in depth. They're they're no. going in and then Luffy messes something up and they all got to, you know, 100 percent make up for it. So um, and then last couple uh, quest questions I want to get through just real quick. Sure. Um, so we obviously know about Rox's, you know, history of God Valley and leading up to that, we know that Rox was like a really, really powerful pirate, like Roger before Roger and in, in that way where like he was just, you know, his influence and danger to the world and all that stuff, right? He was like the top pirate of his day until that happened, basically. Um, what it's like, what other stuff do you think Rox did to get that kind of notoriety? Like, like like part of it might tie into how he got his crewmates like did he go around saving people and that inspired the people to join him was he just so powerful and caused terrible things to happen that people were scared of him and followed him um like what just what kind of pirate do you think he was and just like what what types of things was he up to before that was was he going to other native cleansings and getting involved you know or was this his first one just like generally what just what do you think he was up to I think he was a pirate pirate like he was a pirate's pirate you know what I mean like he was like Blackbeard is in a lot of ways where it's like you know um take no prisoners in a lot of situations just dominate show your strength mm -hmm. and people will follow like out of whether it's out of fear whether it's out of aligned interests whether it's out of they want to get in on the action and get rich because you know I think Rox is the type to raid a lot of places to get a lot of money from raids, attacking like marines, attacking towns. There's probably a lot of people that joined his crew from a desire to get wealthy. There's a lot of people that joined his crew the same way how we were told in the new world. It's like you either 
you're either a Yonko or you join a Yonko. That's how it works in the new world. Yep. If you're a pirate, you either have to pick a side or get crushed if you're not able to handle the heat. And I think with Rox, it was like he was so strong and his crew little by little amassed so many big names that after a certain point, you know, you either have to like join him or or get destroyed. Like there's or, not or really die. an option yeah. or die. It's like join or die. With Kaido, it was like, you know, Kaido pulled up to the island was like, hey, you should go meet the big man. Whitebeard mm -hmm. was like, hey, you know, Rox wants to meet you. Rox, you know. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, even Kaido, as much of a beast that he was, uh, at the end of the day, he had to join up with a stronger force. Kaido has ambitions to be a leader on his own. Yep. He made his own crew later. All the people on the Rock's crew were captains. Big Mom was already the captain of the Big Mom Pirates when she joined Rocks. Exactly. All of them had ambitions to be leaders, but they had to submit to this better leader or this greater mm -hmm. leader because I think ultimately he was just too much for anyone to handle individually. Uh, and, and I, yeah. and my, my question for that, cause I, I, I mostly agree, but the one wrench in the situation is your boy Whitebeard, because for me, yeah. I don't think he would accept like, like he wouldn't give in to somebody who's saying like, you know, like, like if you pillage a, a poor place of innocent people, that's like, like Whitebeard's from an innocent, you know, or like a poor, yeah. like a place that's all poor. And he's just, and, and, you know, kind people that are just living their lives. Like, so for me, and and could Whitebeard have been like so worried about the situation or, or could he have thought like if I don't follow this guy, he's going to go do worse things. So I need to like, inf you know, stick around. Like, I think that's kind of hard to read into. So part of what I think is it happened is that I definitely agree with like the pillaging part. But I, I have a feeling Rox was a good dude. Like, like, yeah. I, like, I don't think he went to innocent places that were just minding their own business and raided them. But I think he went to like like world government affiliated countries and went in and was like, I'm taking all your shit because I, the government's going to take it otherwise. Cause like the government takes a celestial tribute and all that stuff. So I think that's part of it. And so tying back to Whitebeard, I bet that once he met Whitebeard, there was like an agreement where like, Hey, if you join me, I'll send a certain amount of money over to Sphinx for you or something like that's that. That's what I'm saying. Like maybe Whitebeard did the raids and stuff, even if it wasn't the most morally good thing, because he would use the money to help his hometown. Yep. That, so I, and, and Rox probably swore like, we will not attack Sphinx if you listen to me. Yeah. And Whitebeard's like, okay, so I'm getting money and my and they're not going to go bother them. All I got to do is follow this guy. Like our, it, it probably told him like, look. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, but I, you're not, you're not my captain though. You know what I mean? Or something like, you know, like I'll, I'll listen, but like, I, you know, I don't believe in you. I'm just working for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that it's kind of the thing. Same way, like, I don't think Aokiji agrees with Blackbeard on how he goes about things. I don't think Aokiji wants to harm innocent people, but he's on the crew. Why? Cause they have aligned interests in some way or another. Mm -hmm. So, you know, ultimately I think it comes down to, Whitebeard sharing some interests in common with rocks, maybe guaranteeing protection to his hometown, getting them money, and then the rest was kind of just a consequence. It's, Whitebeard clearly didn't enjoy his time on the crew. He doesn't speak of it highly. Exactly. So it's not it's not like he was enamored with rocks. I, I don't think he was. And even in the flashback, we see that he thinks rocks is an idiot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, do I think rocks is a totally evil, evil bad guy? No, I think Blackbeard is taking rocks's legacy and, and warping it. Yeah. Uh, to, to a bad degree. I think Rox definitely had some elements to his character where he was kind of a decent guy, maybe. Um, the fact that Whitebeard is calling him a fool or an idiot in an almost like joking fashion, like the way that yeah. the Straw Hats refer to Luffy, makes me think that maybe Rox was kind of a... Uh, maybe like an energetic, goofy kind of guy that wasn't necessarily just pure evil. And it's the world government that painted him this way. They paint Luffy the same way. They would, if they had their yeah. their way, the world government would make Luffy seem like the most evil person in existence. Yep. But we know that's not what he is. Cause, so, cause, you know, because because you think about God Valley, and Rocks was there to defeat the Celestial Dragons. Right? Yeah. Well, well, he was there to yeah. get the fruits and the mo there's other things but yeah when, steal the, the shit but. when push came to shove it was roger and garp defending the celestial dragons who we know are evil unequivocally and then on the other side we had you know rocks trying to defeat them and take down part of the government so right there builds that idea of like you know um like who are the good people like well whoever wins gets to say who the good people are you know what i mean like it's kind of like do flamingo with like the justice yeah. depends on the victor it's one of the big mysteries you know yeah. why did they defend celestial dragons like what led up to that you know i i, I think that's still one of the biggest mysteries we have to figure out yeah, i 100 so. agree 
Um, all right, so I, I think we're at the end here. I know we're, we're reaching the time. I know you got a stream here soon, so I want to get you out of here. So real quick, you got uh, anything you want to plug to the chat or to the you know viewers? Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, you know, check out the uh, check out the Hidden Island. Check out my channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I post updates on there and other stupid shit from time to time. And uh, on my channel, if you enjoyed the discussion today, the buggy talk especially, my next video is going to be about all the buggy stuff. I'm going to be going in depth on it talking about what i think happened with buggy you guys got a sneak preview of that today uh so keep an eye out for that theory that's on the way and uh yeah aside that aside from that that's pretty much it so cool. thanks for thanks for having me Dak. i really appreciate this uh, conversation it was it was fun as fuck dude no problem always man it's all, always good to talk to you uh i mean i'm glad i'm glad your channel is doing really well all your videos have been fire everyone please go check them out thank you bro um and uh and yeah i mean everything will be linked down below so if you want to go check them out I mean, you guys probably already do most of you guys but uh but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and um, see you guys next Thanks. week.